Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, Parallel Deku, back with another fanfiction. This is the first part of, What if Deku of Class 1 begot Harim? Now before starting, please give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Hizuku Midoriya stood in front of UA High School, arguably the best hero school in Japan. The school alumni are a who's who of great heroes, from All Might and Endeavor to Gang Orca and Mirko. Now it was Izuku's turn to enter these hallowed halls. He spent ten hard months undergoing the grueling training plan All Might had created, in order to make Izuku a worthy vessel for the sacred torch, one for all. I'm the bearer of one for all now, I can't disappoint All Might. I have to pass this exam, thought Izuku, tightening his grip on his backpack. The prospective hero in training walked into UA, his confidence in the task to come rising. Stupid Deku, growled out a familiar voice, coming from behind him. Izuku flinched at the tone and the venom in the words. Izuku turned spotting his oldest friend Katsuki Bekugo. Izuku reflexively and subconsciously changed his posture, shrinking into himself to make himself look smaller. Tekken, stuttered out Izuku using the old childhood nickname. Katsuki's ever-present glare intensified. Get out of my way D.E.K.U. or I'll set you on fire, and call me that name again and I'll knock all your teeth out, stated Bekugo. Izuku, thoroughly intimidated and scared, immediately moved aside, replying incoherently as Bakugo passed without another word. Izuku sighed in relief. I'm lucky I didn't run into him on the way here, thought Izuku, even if Bakugo hasn't been beating on Izuku as much since the sludge villain incident. Bakugo still would occasionally still berate him, attack him or destroy his stuff. It could have been pretty bad if he was injured before the exam. Izuku let out another sigh I can't keep being afraid of him, I'm not defenseless anymore, thought Izuku, remembering his training as he turns to continue walking. I have to remember all the work I put in. Thanks to All Might, I'm actually going to be a hero, thought Izuku giving himself a pep talk, his confidence once again rising, only for him to immediately trip, or I'll just die thought Izuku as he fell face first, closing his eyes in anticipation of hitting the ground. Squish. Izuku was thoroughly confused as to why the brick path felt so soft. Izuku pushed himself up, seeing that he had fallen onto a bed of mushrooms. Hey, excuse me, but are you all right? Stuttered a quiet female voice. Izuku turned toward the voice. Standing there was a girl that was shorter than him by at least a head, with shoulder-length honey-brown hair which was styled in a mushroom-shaped bob with bangs long enough to hide her eyes and most of her face. She was wearing a gray hoodie that looked a size too big as it went past her waist. The hoodie depicted a line of Goombas marching, along with this she wore some tight-fitting pants and simple brown shoes. Altogether Izuku thought she was incredibly cute. Izuku scrambled to get to his feet a blush on his face. Ay ay, I am fine, though, spoke Izuku, starting to reply only for the chiming of the PA system to cut him off. All exam candidates please enter the auditorium, the presentation for the exam will begin shortly, announced a robotic voice from the speakers. Hey, come on let's go, we can't be late, spoke a tall young man that had pitch black skin with fluffy white hair and black eyes, who was wearing a dark peacoat, dark jeans, and a pair of black boots. The boy started to walk away as soon as he was done talking. The teen threw an irritated glare at Izuku. The girl seemed hesitant to leave, quickly looking back and forth between the retreating form of the dark teen and Izuku. With a bow, she spoke quickly but in such a quiet tone that Izuku almost didn't hear her. Go. Good luck. She stuttered as she ran to catch up with the dark-skinned teen. Izuku's face was covered in a deep blush. I talked to a girl, thought Izuku excitedly. Then he remembered. The exam, thought Izuku an alarm running into the main building as to not be late. XXX. The exam orientation did not go well for Izuku. To start he was seated right next to Bakugo. This resulted in him being on edge. But once President Mike showed up, Izuku descended into an excited muttering spree at seeing the pro that hosted one of his favorite radio shows. Izuku's muttering was brought to a stop when a tall blue-haired boy several rows in front of him berated him for his muttering in front of the entire auditorium, which caused most in the room to laugh at him, at least there was a silver lining. He wasn't placed in the same testing site as Bakugo, the blonde bully even commented on this, saying TCH, you're lucky we're in different test areas Deku, I would have put you in a crater threatened Bakugo aggressively. After the presentation was the written exam, which was a lengthy exam ranging from math and sciences to hero law, history, ethical questions, and a hypothetical scenario essay question about a rescue hero. At the moment Izuku stood in front of Battle Zone Beta in his blue tracksuit. The nervous green-haired boy stood near the back of the pack trying to psych himself up for the battle to come, which he was failing at spectacularly as his body was shaking with nerves. With an audible gulp, he looked around at the other examinees to try and distract himself. How come none of these guys seem nervous at all? Are they that confident? Well, some of them even have special gear, thought Izuku as he looked through the crowd. He noticed a familiar bob cut. Hey, it's her, the nice girl who kept me from getting hurt when I fell. I never got to thank her for helping me. I should thank her properly and wish her good luck, spoke Izuku in his mind, as he willed his body to walk toward the girl. He only got a few steps before a hand was placed on his shoulder. Izuku internally freaked out when he came face to face with the tall boy that called him out earlier. She looks like she trying to focus on the exam. 
What are you gonna do? Distract her and ruin her chances to succeed, accused the taller blue-haired boy. Izuku immediately started to try and defend himself. This drew the attention of some of the other examinees in the crowd. Izuku could hear them recognize him, they started to dismiss him as any sort of competition. I guess everyone has already written me off, thought Izuku as the blue-haired boy looked at him in disapproval seemingly not noticing the crowd's comments. All right, let's start. There are no countdowns in a real battle. Get a move on little listeners, yelled President Mike. Most of the other examinees were already running into the zone. Izuku broke out into a run as he followed after the other examinees. Suddenly a 1PT robot broke out of a building in front of him. The dark green machine locked onto him. Target acquired, destroy, spoke the robot as it rushed Izuku, its single wheel spinning rapidly. Izuku knew he needed to dodge but his feet wouldn't move. Before the one-pointer could connect a punch, it was crushed under a giant hand much like a person might crush a bug. Hey are you alright? Asked a girl who looked a little taller than him with teal eyes and ginger hair that was done in a high ponytail on the left side of her head. She was wearing a martial art gi. Why? Yes thank you. Spoke Izuku. The girl smiled at him which caused his face to heat up. No problem, good luck. Responded the girl as she quickly ran down the street in search of more robots. Before Izuku could get distracted at the fact he talked to another pretty girl. Six minutes and two seconds left. Called out President Mike. Freaking out, Izuku broke out into a full-blown sprint and began desperately searching for any of the robots. He ran down streets and through alleys but only found destroyed robots. Some melted others slashed to pieces, some were even covered in mushrooms. He eventually got to the main street for the mock city, which was packed with examinees and robots. Many of the examinees were calling out their total points. Izuku frantically looked for a robot for himself. He spotted a two-pointer crawling down the side of a building. But it was fast approaching a blonde-haired girl with large horns and a tail who hadn't noticed the fast-approaching enemy. Izuku broke out into a dead sprint and his eyes full of steely determination. As Izuku got closer the two-pointer leaped off the of the building post to strike the girl. Kill target, bellowed the machine mid-leap. Everything felt like it was going in slow motion, the girl turning around eyes widening in surprise. Izuku tackled the girl, narrowing evading the robot as it crashed onto the asphalt. The two teens landed on the sidewalk with a light thud with Izuku on top. Izuku looked down at the girl. His eyes immediately locked with her big blue eyes. Are you okay? Asked Izuku with pure concern in his eyes. Izuku's normal stutter was nowhere to be found as he was in his hero mode. The girl looked up at him for a moment, her cheeks tinted slightly red. Before her eyes shifted to look behind him, they widened in alarm. The girl grabbed hold of Izuku and forced them to roll out of the way, just as the scorpion-like villain robot stabbed its teaser tail into their previous location. The two prospective heroes came to a stop, but this time the girl was on top of Izuku. The girl quickly sat up causing her to straddle Izuku. Horn cannon, yelled out the girl in English her hands on the sides of her head. The horns on her head lunched out at a great speed, being replaced by a new pair almost instantly. The launched horns acted like missiles, they changed direction and impacted the two-pointer penetrating its head and coming out the other side. The horns then banked around and hovered above the girl's head as the two-pointer crumbled to the ground. She stood up, and hesitantly extended a hand down to Izuku who was currently looking at her in awe and curiosity. She shifted on her feet nervously causing Izuku to notice that she had hooves for feet. Thank, you, for the save. I'm fine thanks to you, spoke the girl clearly not confident in her Japanese as she slipped back into her native tongue. But she still had a small smile on her face. Izuku accepted her hand as she helped him stand. Yo, you're welcome. I am just glad you're okay, replied Izuku in English with a small smile. The girl seemed surprised. A large smile broke out on her face as she went from nervous to excited rapidly. 40. In a dark room full of monitors depicting the various battle zones and the examinees sits the staff of UA. Clearly the examinees have no idea on how many villain bots are present or their locations. They have limited time, must cover a vast area, and hunt down every last target. Some gather information to plan a strategy, others use speed to outpace their peers. Of course staying calm under pressure can also be a huge advantage as can pure battle prowess and combat ability. The best students use a combination of all these tactics, this allows them to gather the most points. Explained Principal Nezu as the mouse, dog bear creature sipped from a glass of tea as he looked at the screen showing the different battlegrounds. Thank you for the explanation Principal Nezu. The test has certainly changed since I took it, spoke All Might who was seated next to the principal. This year's group certainly looks promising, and some of them look so delicious, commented Midnight in a sultry tone. Yeah look at that examinee, he's been tearing through bots since the start and hasn't slowed down commented 13 gesturing to Bakugo standing on top of a pile of villain bots. And there's still time left before it's over, the real test starts now. Let's see how they react. Stated power loader as he pressed a big red button. XXX. The sound tank of trends and small explosions cut off the blonde girl before she could speak again. All the examinees looked up at the zero pointer. The robot loomed above them, even hunched over it stood taller than the nearby buildings, one of its hands crushing the top of a building causing dust and debris to fall onto the street below. That's the zero-pointer, questioned the girl clearly scared. 
The Zero Pointer then proceeds to punch the street kicking up a large cloud of dust and wind. Izuku shielded his eyes. The blast of dust stopped and Izuku looked up at the Zero Pointer as he fell on his butt. He heard screams and shouts as the other examinees were running away. All of them ignored him including the orange-haired girl that saved him earlier. The blue-haired boy that berated him also ran by with barely a glance at Izuku. Come on we have to run, yelled the blonde girl as she hosted Izuku to his feet with ease, and started to pull him along. 40. Back in the control room, All Might was on the edge of his seat, his eyes flicking from one screen to another. I see, this is where things get interesting. A person's true character is revealed when they're faced with danger, spoke All Might in the observation room. All Might spotted his successor being dragged away from danger by a girl with horse-like features. Maybe I should have put some combat training into Izuku's training regime, thought All Might, feeling foolish that he didn't think of that sooner. XXX, less than two minutes remaining, announced President Mike. Two minutes, I have to find some smaller villains or all that training will be wasted, thought Izuku in a panic and he was still being semi-dragged by the blonde. OOWW, cried out a voice. Izuku froze at the sound, causing him to slip from the blonde girl's grasp. He looked back seeing the brown-haired girl from the school gate. She was partially trapped under rubble, the trends of the zero-pointer approaching quickly from behind her, the interaction with her from this morning flashing through his head. Izuku knew that he didn't have enough time to dig her out. That's when she looked up, letting Izuku see her unique eyes that were screaming out for help as their gazes meet. His body moved on its own once again as he ran toward the zero-pointer with A. The blonde girl now noticing his absence turns around to see him sprinting toward the zero-pointer. XXX. All Might watched as Izuku ran toward the zero-pointer at full speed. There are no combat points for taking on a humongous villain. But there is an opportunity. A chance to shine. Spoke All Might as he watched Izuku's form blur as he executed a powerful jump. Which shot him high into the air and blew the dust away. Causing the other staff's eyes to widen. To show what you're really made of. Continued All Might. His eyes glued to Izuku as the boy cocked his now glowing right fist back the power of OFA tearing his sleeve to shreds up to his shoulder. Izuku continued higher as he approached the robot's head. XXX, the words of advice that All Might had given him that morning echo through Izuku's head. So, clench your butt cheeks and yell from the depths of your heart. Recalled Izuku as he reached the robot's head. Smash, yelled Izuku as fist connecting with the robot's head caving it inwards and breaking what would be the robot's neck. The zero pointer was pushed back more than a block and began to fall over as explosions rippled throughout its body. All the other examinees looked on in stunned silence, as they watched the boy that most of them had written off, defeat the robot that had them all running scared. XXX, All Might nearly split open from his massive grin, as the rest of the staff were in shock, except for Nezu who had his arms raised in a cheer, and Aizawa who simply narrowed his eyes in disapproval. That's right, show who you are, embody what it means to be a hero. Nothing is nobler than self-sacrifice, he yelled All Might as he stood buffing up in excitement. A hint of pride in his words. XXX. Just one minute left. Yelled out President Mike. Just as gravity started to remind Izuku who was boss. Izuku started to rapidly approach the ground. Izuku desperately tried to think of a way to save himself. After realizing his arm and legs were broken. His eyes were filled with tears as he fell. Suddenly as he was only a few stores up. The body of the horse girl who was riding on top of a pair of her own horns. Collided into him slowing him down. But Izuku quickly realized it wasn't enough to completely stop them. Izuku used his remaining good arm to turn them around so he would hit the pavement first. Thankfully they landed in a massive pile of mushrooms, which acted as a massive cushion to slow them down further. Izuku hit the ground hard enough to knock the wind out of him and he was pretty sure he heard a snap sound come from his ribs. I'm alive they saved me, thought Izuku as he looked at the blonde girl on top of him and the mushroom girl who was being helped up by the orange-haired girl. But he remembered he still had zero points. I need to move, I still have a chance to at least get one point before it ends, spoke Izuku trying to get his body to move. The three girls heard Izuku clearly, watching as he desperately tried to move. Time's up, yelled President Mike, as a siren echoed throughout the test area marking the end of the exam. Devastated Izuku sobbed, before the pain of his injuries finally overwhelmed him and he slipped into unconsciousness. Those who had seen Izuku's display walked closer but still gave him some breathing room. Pony untangled herself from Izuku and stood, she was bruised and bleeding slightly but she was okay. Very nice, good work all around, all of you are heroes in my eyes, every one of you. Here reward yourselves, have some gummies, spoke recovery girl as she handed an examinee some candy. As she started to walk toward Izuku and took a quick look at his injuries. Oh, my goodness, you were this hurt by your own quirk Sunny. spoke recovery, making mental notes on the extent of his injuries before her lips stretched out and gave Izuku's forehead a smooch. Green light surrounded Izuku's injuries, and those around watched as before their eyes the mangle and broken limbs healed before their very eyes. All right, he'll be fine now. Is there anyone else who's injured? Spoke recovery girl. Her legs hurt and she's bleeding. Spoke the orange hair girl, gesturing to the horse girl and the brown haired she was helping to stand. 
Recovery girl quickly gave each girl a quick kiss on the cheek, after which she went around healing the examinees. The three girls watched as Izuku was loaded onto a stretcher by a pair of little robots. All three of them had looks of resolve on their faces as they watched Izuku be carried away. XXX a few days later 30. The staff all sat in a meeting room going over the footage from the exams. They had already cut most of the examinees who didn't meet the benchmark. Currently, they are awarding hero points and discussing placement into a class and department. Nezu brought up a picture of Izuku on a large TV screen that was on the wall. All right next is Izuku Midoriya. He scored perfect marks on the written exam. For the practical, he scored zero villain points. However, we have three incidents where rescue points could be awarded. Please look over his file before we begin, spoke Nezu. The teachers all looked at their tablets reviewing Izuku's file. Nezu there seems to be an error with Midoriya's file. It marks him as quirkless, spoke Power Loader. This brought the other staff's attention to that portion of the file. A smirk grew on Nezu's face. That is not an error Power Loader. Izuku Midoriya it would seem as a late bloomer, informed Nezu. This caused some of the teacher's eyes to go wide. Wait so you're telling us, he came into the exam quirkless. Cast snipe disbelief clear in his voice. That takes a good deal of courage. Comment Vlad King respect in his tone. More like a great deal of foolishness. Commented Eraser Head, his tone clearly portraying his thoughts. In my experience heroes tend to be foolish and stubborn. Retorted Vlad, his eyes narrowed at the logic-obsessed hero. Eraser Head answers Vlad's action with a glare. Let us return to the task at hand. The first is him recusing Pony Tsunotori from a two-pointer. Spoke Nezu, diffusing the tension between the two pros somewhat and moving the meeting forward. Nezu changed the screen shifting the image to show the video of Izuku saving Pony. After watching the video through on loop some of the staff spoke. Seems pretty textbook to me. Instead of going for the points, he chose to save her. Stated Snipe, the cowboy-themed hero adjusting his gas mask while he spoke. A little sloppy after the initial save, he should have gotten them out of danger sooner. But they are here to learn after all. Commented Cementos a kind expression on his face. Ah, a classic example of a heroic move. The little listeners certainly earned the seas. Added President Mike, speaking much too loud as his hands moved about erratically as he talked. When no one else spoke Nezu smiled then it's decided Izuku will be awarded 20 rescue points. Now we will move on to Izuku's defeat of the Zero Pointer in the aftermath. Spoke Nezu as the scene started to show the incident on a loop from multiple angels. Oh, the way he jumps into action, without hesitation. Despite his clear fear, that youth filled courage. It's so, invigorating. I give him full points, spoke Midnight, as she licks her lips and rubs her thighs together. Both actions that her colleagues promptly try and ignore. He chose to rush and save the girl instead of running to secure the villain points he desperately needed. Full points, spoke Ectoplasm with a stiff nod. He quickly discerned that he couldn't free the girl from the rubble in time. So, he chose to eliminate the threat instead. This shows a good level of situational thinking, rapid dissection making, and a heroic mentality. Full points, spoke Nezu evaluating Izuku's actions. He willingly put himself in danger to save someone else. Do not call that heroic would be shameful, spoke 13 as she tapped her fingers on her tablet reading through Izuku's file again. Self-sacrifice is the core of what it means to be a hero. Rough, full points, growled out Hound Dog as he wrote note into Izuku's file for future use. Even while he was injured and most likely in excoriating pain, he made it so he'd take the brunt of the fall instead of the girl. To make that decision in his condition. Full points, commented Vlad King, impressed with Izuku's actions. Snipe and Cementos both nodded in agreement with their co-workers. When no one spoke, Nezu brought up Izuku's total points. Onto the big screen, Eraser Head seemed displeased. Then Izuku Midoriya will be awarded 60 rescue points for saving Kinko Komori and an additional 30 for planning to shield Pony from the brunt of the fall. This brings his total up to 110 rescue points, more than enough to place in number one spot for the practical and has earned a spot in the hero course. Now I believe he should be placed in class when a spoke Nezu before Eraser cut him off. I refuse to have him in my class, stated Eraser head bluntly. Oh, care to explain your reasoning, Aizawa? Asked Nezu a clear and dangerous glint in the principal's eyes. Yeah, Eraser, what gives? Asked President Mike, confused about his sleep-deprived friend. I believe that someone like him shouldn't be accepted into this school, let alone the hero course, and especially not my class. He literally manifested his quirk during the exam. He has no control over his quirk. He broke his body with that stunt, in a real fight, he'd be nothing more a liability. He'll have to rely on someone else to save him after his body becomes useless. There is no way he can become a hero. If you want to accept him, then stick him in the gen ed course. If he gains control of that impractical quirk of his sure let him try for the hero course. In the meantime, there are other candidates that have better control and are more qualified. Spoke Erasure spelling out exactly why he thought Izuku should not be accepted. Vlad was visibly growing more frustrated as he heard more and more of the same points he'd heard when he was a kid for why he shouldn't have been a hero. That plus his and Erasure's conflicting teaching philosophies. All might seem uncertain about the growing tension. He looked to the other teachers and saw some sigh in exasperation. He quickly deduced that conflict between these two was somewhat common. Before the symbol of peace could attempt to quell the situation and defend his student. 
Vlad slammed a fist onto the meeting table as he stood interrupting Erasure, who glared at the other hero. So, what if he's got control issues, or his quirk is impractical? I heard the same excuses when I was young. Just because he doesn't match your opinion of a hero doesn't mean he should be rejected from the course, that's why we vote in the first place. That kid put in the work and earned his place in the hero course. If you don't want him in class A, fine then I'll have him in class B. I'll give the kid a chance to prove you wrong. Bellowed out Vlad clearly agitated with the in his opinion often hypocritical underground hero. That's enough, both of you or I'll have both of you grade all the seniors' graduation exams by yourselves. Threatened Nezu. Both heroes calm down still clearly agitated. Izuku Midoriya will be placed in class 1B. With that said to ensure fairness in the deciding of the remaining students. Erasure is there a student from class B1 in your class? Or would you prefer to simply take the next two accepted candidates? Asked Nezu once both the pros had calmed down. Erasure looked through class B's roster. I'll take Nedio Monoma. Replied Erasure as the boys' file moved onto the screen. Approved. Monoma will be moved into class 1A. How about we take a short break for lunch? When we return, we'll be reviewing Katsuki Bakugu. Spoke Nezu. The teachers all stood and began to filter out of the room. Vlad, in particular, took his tablet so he could review the files of the students assigned to his class so far. As the blood-controlling hero looked through the files of his soon-to-be students, a smile grew on his face. I've got a good feeling about this year's class, spoke Vlad already thinking about altering some of his lesson plans. It had been a week since the entrance exam, and Izuku was thoroughly freaking out over the lack of results. The fact he couldn't get a hold of All Might did not help his mental state. Izuku had basically been in a day since returning home from the exam. All he did over the last few days was wake up, eat, work out, and watch Hero News. He'd barely respond to his mother when she'd talk to him. And Ko had been over the moon when Izuku initially came back from the exam and told her he manifested a quirk. She had started to cry and brought her son into a hug when he said his quirk was telekinetic in nature. However, her joy quickly vanished when she noticed Izuku's mood. And Ko's worry reached a boiling point on the seventh day of Izuku's days. When they were eating lunch, she stopped eating halfway through the meal, placing her chopstick in the bowel and putting it to the side. Izuku, honey, what's wrong? Asked her concern visible in her entire being. Huh, I am fine mom, replied Izuku with what he thought looked like a genuine smile. Normally Inko would believe her son. She'd normally wait patiently for him to be ready to tell her what was bothering him. But she knew deep down that he'd never tell her. She wasn't going to let it slide. No, this time she was going to be stern. Izuku Midoriya, you haven't been yourself since the exam. Please talk to me, tell me what's wrong, pleaded Inko. Izuku was planning on just dismissing his mother's concerns and reiterated that he was fine. But he made the mistake of looking into his mother's eyes. The overwhelming maternal concern in them caused Guilty to take hold of him. Please, spoke in co-tears threatening to spill. Izuku's resistance crumbled. So with a deep breath, Izuku told his mother how the exam went, how he was laughed at and dismissed, how he hadn't gotten a single point, and how all he was able to do was save some people. He did however conveniently leave out how injured he'd gotten. By the end of his retelling, he was crying heavily. Izuku, I'm so proud of you, spoke in co softly bringing her son into a hug. Her words clearly confused Izuku he looked at her through tear-filled eyes. You risked yourself to save people, that's what heroes do. If Yue doesn't value that, then that's their loss. You'll be a hero whether you go to Yue or not, spoke in Ko, as she raised a hand and used her quirk to pull her cell phone from the kitchen counter over to her. You really think so, mom? Questioned Izuku as he rubbed his eyes whipping away some tears. Of course, Yue is not the only top hero school in Japan, replied in Ko quickly brought something up on her phone and then showed her son. There's Shikesu High School, and you're not limited to hero schools in Japan, there's Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, Wildcats Gym, Avengers Academy, Salem Hero Academy, Camelot Castle, Mythicos Academy, Valhalla Hero Academy, and Vulcan School for Heroes. If you don't get into UA, you can just take the test for one of these schools. You will be a hero, I'll help you, however, I can. Spoke in Ko, a determination in her eyes that mirrored her son's, as she showed her son information on the other hero schools. Izuku was quiet for a few moments digesting his mother's words and scrolled through the information. A determined look grew on Izuku's face. You're right, mom. It's not the end of the world if I don't get into UA. I'll just have to work harder and attend a different school. Thanks, mom, I, I needed that. Spoke Izuku an appreciative smile sent at his mother. You're welcome. How about we finish eating? Then I'll help you look up more information. Purposed in Ko, as she gave him a quick hug and moved to take her seat again. Ding dong. Now what could that be? You finish up dinner while I go get this. Spoke in Ko as she quickly made herself presentable and moved toward the door. Izuku continued eating his lunch quietly. I see you, KU. A letter. The letter from you is here. Yelled his mother as she burst into the room in an adorable manner. Izuku couches on some of his food at her sudden entrance. Thanks, mum. Spoke Izuku as his mother passed him the letter. I'll just give you some privacy. Spoke in Ko as she moved to leave. No, mom, let's open it together, spoke Izuku before Inko could leave. With a nod, the Midoriya family sat on the couch. Izuku hesitated for a moment then quickly ripped open the letter and a metal disc dropped onto the coffee table. 
The Midorias looked curiously at the disc until it lit up and projected an image onto a wall. I am here, as a projection, yelled out the recording of All Might startling the small family. What All Might? But isn't this from UA? Questioned Izuku looking at his equally confused mother. Now I know that you maybe wonder why I'm here. Well, you're looking at the newest member of the UA facility. Continued All Might as the camera zoomed out revealing the symbol of peace wearing a yellow suit. That explains why All Might was here in Musutafu. He was here to teach at UA. Commented Inko, Izuku quickly put together why All Might was really in Musutafu. He came here looking for a successor. I have to continue to rise to his expectations. Thought Izuku. So, let's move this along. Young Midoriya, even though you passed the written exam with flying colors, you got zero combat points in the practical exam. I quote him sorry, spoke All Might a sad tone in the massive man's voice. The words felt like a physical blow to Izuku. Inko places a hand on his back trying to comfort her son. Fortunately, there were other factors. But before that, look at this short clip for your viewing pleasure. Continued All Might as the screen changed. It now shows the three girls that Izuku had met during the exam showing them approach present Mike. Excuse me Mr. Present Mike. Did we have a quick word with you? Asked the orange-haired girl. Izuku was confused as to what was happening. While Inko was thinking in a completely different direction. Maybe my baby can finally have a girlfriend. Maybe I'll get grandbabies in the future. Thought Inko excitedly. They showed up after the exam to talk about you young man. Spoke All Might explaining the situation. Of course, I can always spare a moment for my little listeners. Replied present Mike. Do you know that kid with the fluffy green hair? About this height? Asked the orange-haired girl using her hand to show how tall she meant. He was the one with the cute freckles and the pretty eyes. Added the horse girl in English. President Mike clearly understanding her. And Ko was wondering what the girl said given that whatever it was caused Izuku to blush heavily. W we were wondering if we could give him some of our points. Stuttered the brown-haired girl. Yeah. Hey. Saved me. He should at least get the points for the two-pointer he saved me from. Spoke the horse girl her Japanese rough. She looked up at President Mike with determination. H.E.W. would have had a better score if he hadn't stopped to S. Save me. Give him some of my points. Pleaded the brown-haired girl. While I and everyone else was running away. He charged toward the danger to face it head on to save someone. It's not right if he doesn't get in. Someone like him deserves to be in UA. I can't just do nothing. Give him some of my points. Spoke the orange-haired girl passionately. The three girls bowed toward present Mick. You have a quirk now, yes. But it is your actions that inspire others to act, and that's why I am here. You see the practical exam had a hidden element. Spoke All Might as he held up a little X sign. Thanks for showing up at the station with your requests. But there's no reason to give him your points. The kid's gonna chart well on his own. Replied present Mike the clip stops. As it shifted to the clips of Izuku's actions during the exam. And Ko pulled her son into a death grip when she saw the clips of Izuku's heroically dangerous actions. How could a hero course reject someone who is committed to saving others, no matter the risk? After all, that is what makes a hero. That's why the exam has rescue points. A panel of judges review the recordings of the exam and they award points for heroic acts beyond just fighting villains. Izuku Midoriya for your actions you received a total of 110 points. Not only did you pass the exam you placed first and set a new record for rescue points. Congratulations. You'll be contacted in a few days. Also, you will be testing a dorm system with first year students it is currently opt-in. With that said I welcome you, young Midoriya to your hero academy. Finished All Might as the projector powered down. I I did it, mom. I got into UA. Spoke Izuku tears of joy streaming down his cheeks. I'm so proud of you. Cried out in co-tears of joy also streaming down her face. The small family hugged as their combined tears started to flood the apartment. 40 UA Campus Main Building 40. Izuku stood in front of a massive door that read 1B. He was hesitant to enter for multiple reasons. He was worried he'd open the door and Bakugo would be in there waiting to beat him or that blue-haired kid would be there to humiliate him again. He was worried that nothing would change that he'd be treated the exact same as he has been. It's you, spoke a very happy and familiar voice. Izuku turned to see the horse girl from the exam standing there with a big smile. H hello it's good to see you again, spoke Izuku stuttering as the girl approached him. Are you in, class 1B? Asked the girl in rough Japanese. She stood close to him clearly eager for a response. Izuku blushed at the closeness of such a cute girl and couldn't find his voice. So, he just nodded. Her face broke into a wide grin as she pulled Izuku into a hug. Yeah, that means we're classmates, spoke the girl in English as she jumped up and down in joy, easily carrying Izuku with her. Man, she's stronger than she looks. I'm happy to at least have someone I know in class, thought Izuku, his face bright red at the girl's actions. Oh, I haven't introduced myself yet, spoke the girl as she put Izuku down and took a step back. Hello, I'm Pony Tsunotori. Please call me Pony. Continued the now named Pony with a big smile and her horse tail moving back and forth. I am Izuku Midori, it's nice to meet you P-Pony. Responded Izuku with a bow blushing at calling her by her first name. Let's go be heroes, Izuku. Spoke Pony as she grabbed Izuku's hand and opened the door to their classroom. Their entrance caught the attention of the whole room. There were only 12 other students in the room and all of them were currently looking at them. 
That's when the orange-haired girl from the exam stood and approached them followed by the brown-haired girl and her dark-skinned companion. Hi, it's good to see you made it in. I was worried about you for a moment. I'm Itsuka Kendo by the way and this is Kanoko Komori and her friend Shuhai Kiruaro. Spoke Kendo bringing Kanoko in front of her. He doesn't look like much. The kid looks like a scared rabbit. Thought Shuhai trying his best not to voice his thoughts as he sized up Izuku. TT thank you for saving me from the zero pointer. Stuttered out Kanoko. Her words caused some in the class to suspect Izuku was the one to take down the zero pointer. H hi I'm Izuku Midoriya. Thank you for offering up your points, I really appreciate the gesture. Responded Izuku as he bowed. The three girls blushed clearly embarrassed. They told you about that huh? Spoke Kendo scratching her cheek. How about, we sit near each other? Proposed Pony excited at the prospect of sitting with new friends. Sure, we already took some seats near each other. Responded Kendo with a kind smile. A group of four grabbed their seats. With Pony on his right Kendo seated in front of him, Kanoko was on Kendo's right and Shiai was on Kanoko's right. The three girls started to talk amongst each other clearly having interacted after they meet at the exam. Izuku only occasionally was asked to add something to the conversion. While Shiai basically did not talk the whole time. He just kept sending Izuku glares every now and then. As time went on and more students entered the classroom, a young girl with shoulder length, black bob-shaped hair, cerulean eyes, and wearing a neutral expression on her face, joined them sitting down in the seat to Kendo's left. Kendo had introduced the quiet girl as Yui Kodai, a friend from middle school. It is nice to meet you, please take care of me, spoke Yui her face and tone remaining neutral. Over the next ten minutes, most of the seats had been filled, only five seats were left, two of which being the seats to Izuku's left and the one behind him. A girl with long pointed teeth and curly dark moss green hair that reached below her shoulders. Flopped down in the seat to his left. Hello, name's Setsuna Takage Nice to meet you. Spoke Setsuna the girl giving them a large sharp toothed grin. Hi I'm Kendo, and these are Kodai, Kamori, Kuraro, Pony, and Midoriya. Replied Kendo introducing the others. Izuku suddenly felt someone touching his hair. But when he looked there wasn't anyone behind him. When he looked back Setsuna was leaning closer to him. You've got curly green hair just like me. But how do you get it to be so soft and fluffy? Asked Setsuna with a large teasing grin. TT thank you for the C compliment TT Takage Chan. B but I D don't do anything special to it. Responded Izuku he descended into incoherent mumbling. I can already tell, we're gonna get along great. But none of that Takage stuff, call me Setsuna. Okay, spoke Setsuna leaning even closer to Izuku. She bopped his nose with her disembodied hand before reattaching it. The boy practically had steam coming off him as his entire face went bright red. Setsuna started laughing at the boy's reaction. Setsuna quiet teasing him. Spoke Kendo defending the green-haired boy. Setsuna leaned back in her seat. Sorry, he's just got such cute reactions, I couldn't help myself. Commented Setsuna. Her words caused Izuku to somehow blush harder as he hid his face with his arms. Setsuna simply gestured to Izuku's current state, as if it proved her point. Before Kendo could respond the door to the classroom flew open. What up fam? You are ready to be legit heroes. Yelled out a girl as she walked into class. The girl had straight, fawn-colored hair that reached just below her shoulders and large, dark brown eyes. She stood only a little shorter than Izuku and had noticeably full, plump, and glossy lips as well as a quite curvaceous figure. And she was dressed in the UA female uniform but the top few buttons of her shirt were unbuttoned revealing some of her cleavage. There were some comments on her entrance but soon the class descended back into their original conversations. She walked toward the last available seat which was the one right behind Izuku. Hey, your tie's all twisted, spoke the girl stopping by Izuku's desk. Oh oh why yeah, I have never been able to tie one right. I always am mess it up, stutter out Izuku stretching the back of his head. Want me to fix it, it'll only take a minute, offered the girl, kindly and in a nonchalant manner. Izuku didn't know how to respond to the offer. The girl, not hearing a no, shrugged and leaned over and began to fix his tie. At her actions, Izuku looks away with a blush as he didn't want to accidentally see down her shirt. It was over in just a few moments but to Izuku it was an anxiety-filled eternity. He could clearly hear Setsuna laughing quietly at his predicament. They're all set. You gotta look your best on the first day. Names Kami by the way. Spoke the girl as she stood straight again throwing out a peace sign. T thank you 5 to 5 very much Kami. Spoke Izuku with red tinted cheeks. No probs fam. We have to get along. We are gonna be together for the next three years. Spoke Kami waving it off. But OMG, your freckles are shaped like little diamonds. That's so hella cute. Commented Kami quietly in English as she took the seat behind Izuku. I know right. But don't let that fool you Izuku is really strong. Responded Pony also in English clearly having heard Kami. Izuku hid his face in his arms again, tuning out the conversations around him and tried to regain his composure. Izuku wasn't used to this kind of treatment. The only time someone interacted with him in his past usually involved his money being taken or insults, or beatings or some form of humiliation, and often a combination of the four. Such was the reality of his life up to this point. So, it was strange for him to experience anyone his age being kind to him let alone a bunch of very cute girls it was simply unreal for him. A large part of Izuku was terrified that this happiness would be fleeting, that Bakugo would at any moment take this from him like he always did. 
that Hugo would convince everyone in the class to turn against him, to beat and berate him. No matter what you do or how hard you fucking try, you'll never be anything but a worthless Deku. Remember that, thought Izuku, recalling Bakugo's parting words from their middle school graduation. Before Izuku's thoughts could go further down this dark path, the classroom door opened once more. The class went near completely silent. Izuku pulled out his hero notebook. That's the blood hero, Vlad King. He's been teaching at UA since shortly after UA was founded. He took down the villainous banshee single-handedly and helped dismantle the human trafficking ring the ghoul court. He's so cool, thought Izuku, going full hero nerd. When Izuku looked up Vlad and the rest of the class were all staring at him. Like many times before Izuku blushed hard at being the center of attention. Vlad let out a deep kind belly laugh. Reminds me of my first day of hero school, spoke Vlad before he coughed and straightened up. As Midoriya said my name is Vlad King, I'll be your homeroom teacher. You will address me as Sensei, or Vlad Sensei all right, asked Vlad sternly. Yes, Vlad Sensei, replied all the students. Vlad pulls out a clipboard and a pair of reading glasses. Great, now we've got a full day ahead of us. We'll start with introductions, then we have the introduction ceremony. After which you'll all be meeting your other teachers. Then will be the interviews with a hound dog followed by lunch. Lastly, I'll have you all take an assessment so I can get a feel for your capabilities. Then you're all free to go home. For those of you that are moving into the dorms, your stuff should be in the common room. I'll be giving you the tour after school, spoke Vlad glancing at his clipboard. Well, let's get started when I call, give your name, quirk, and a little fact about yourself if you want, spoke Vlad. Izuku pulled out a brand new hero notebook and began adding entries for each of his classmates along with his own questions and speculation on possible uses improvements. Hero analysis for the future no 14, UA class 1B. Pony Tsunotori quirk, horn cannon. I got a good look at Pony's quirk from the entrance exam. It's a very powerful ranged attack that's difficult to dodge due to Pony's ability to control them remotely. But I still have so many questions. How many horns can she control at once? Could she control the horns independently sending them at two different targets? How durable are her horns? She used them to fly briefly, how much weight can they carry? She could potentially pick up and remove multiple civilians from danger. She also appears to have a mutation that gives her horse-like features, I know she has enhanced strength. She probably has enhanced speed, but does she have better senses as well? More information on her quirk is needed. Pony is from Texas which explains her trouble with Japanese. Maybe I should offer to help her. Kami Utsushimi quirk, glamour. So, she can make short-lived visual and auditory illusions, that's so versatile. She could trick villains into thinking they were outnumbered, or make the terrain look different making them crash into things and trip. She could make herself invisible or make illusionary duplicates of herself to confuse her opponents. But what are her limits? How long do the illusions last? How big of an area can she cover? How detailed can she make the illusions? Since her quirk doesn't give her any physical enhancements, she could benefit from support equipment, a weapon perhaps. Some utility items would be very helpful as well. Could she potentially store the gas she breathes out, making gas grenades or maybe some kind of gas mine? If she could, would the illusions be decided beforehand or could she change it at will? Do the illusions affect machines too? If not, then how did she pass the exam? I should ask her. Kami is from California and seems to be fluent in both English and Japanese. Kosai Tsuburaba quirk, solid air. The ability to create platforms and walls of air when he breathes out. A good defensive quirk, but how strong are they? How long can they last? Can they be moved perhaps thrown as an offensive attack? Can he make different shapes? More data is needed. Senkaibara quirk, gyrate. His quirk allows him to make any part of his body rotate like a drill. Could it be used for digging up debris to save civilians or maybe a useful breaching tool? He could enhance his strikes with it. Could he use his quirk to let him swim at high speed, like a boat propeller? Juzo Honuki quirk, softening. He can soften any non-living thing he touches. He could safely save civilians buried under rubble, hinder villains' attempts to escape, or even soften someone's landing from a fall. But how much material can he soften at once? How much range does he have with it? He got in through recommendation. So, he must be very skilled. Are you ring quirk, scales? The ability to sprout scales from his skin and be able to shoot them out as projectiles. A relatively simple quirk that allows for good offensive and defense. It's more than enough to be a good hero. Rin is the last foreign student he is from China and is versed in martial arts. I wonder if, Midoriya, you're next, spoke Vlad, breaking Izuku's train of thought. All eyes turned to Izuku, immediately making him nervous. HH hi, I'm Izuku M. Midoriya, my quirk is called TT Tactile Telekinesis, it lets me enhance my own body. Please take care of me, stuttered out Izuku as he quickly took his seat again. Thankfully Vlad continued to move the introductions along. Izuku returned to his notebook. Ibarra Shuzaki quirk, vines. Her quirk allows her to manipulate her vine like hair. This is such a good versatile quirk. She can attack, defend, restrain opponents and she can use them to rescue trapped civilians. But how could it be improved? Could she improve her striking power by tying the ends of her vines into knots essentially making fails? What about making it into one large braid? 
Depending on her control she could use her vines to swing around like Kamui woods thus increasing her mobility. She seems to have a kind and gentle demeanor that along with her quirk and she'll be a very popular heroine in the future. Itsuka Kendo Quirk, Big Fist. Kendo can enlarge her fist to a gigantic size. The increase in size also seems to enhance her strength. This complements Kendo's martial arts training making her a formidable opponent in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But what else could she do with her quick? Could she launch herself by striking the ground? Or maybe she could throw a civilian out of harm's way. Maybe she could generate wind. I should ask her if she could give me some pointers for how I should fight. Now that I think of it, do I even know how to throw a punch properly? All Might's workout plan focused exclusively on getting me in shape and my endurance. Maybe Kendo could help me. She did mention her family owns a dojo. Setsuna Takage Quirk, Lizard Tail Splitter. She can split up her body into many pieces and all those pieces are able to levitate and move freely through the air. It's an extremely versatile quirk. It could allow her to spy and gather information easily, and at little risk since she can apparently regenerate any piece that is destroyed. She could use her quirk to support other heroes in a battle harassing and distracting the villains. Although her ability to attack is limited as her quirk doesn't seem to increase her strength or striking power. But she could also be very good at infiltration and other situations that require stealth. But how many pieces can she control at once? How far from her can they go? How small can the pieces be? What are the limits of her regeneration? Setsuna is the second recommended student in our class. Tetsu 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 Quirk, Steel. His quirk allows him to turn his skin into steel. A good defensive quirk that should let him tank a lot of hits. He can shield civilians and other heroes with his quirk. Depending on his strength he could breach walls and doors with ease. If he learns the right fighting style, he could become a powerful hero. Shihai Kirwaro Quirk, Black. His quirk allows him to merge with Black. That's all he said dot 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 more information will be needed before I can properly analyze his quirk. I get the feeling that Shihai doesn't like me much. Yosu Awaste Quirk, Weld. Yosu's quirk gives him the ability to fuse objects together at an atomic level. This quirk could be used to weld rubble together making it safer to extract civilians. He could also disable villains by welding them to the floor or walls maybe even weld them to their own bodies effectively restraining them. He'll become a very dangerous melee combatant in the future. Hinoko Komori Quirk, Mushroom. She can create spores that can turn into different kinds of fungus upon contact with any surface. This quirk could be extremely debilitating. She could blind or deafen an opponent by growing mushrooms over their ears and eyes. She could knock someone out easily by having them breathe in her spores and cause them to asphyxiate. She can also make enough mushrooms to cushion falls as she did in the entrance exam, but the effectiveness of this could be limited. Could she possibly stabilize muddy terrain by using her mushrooms to anchor the dirt? She's the first person I meet at UA, she seems to be just as shy as I am. I'm glad she's my classmate and I can't wait to get to know her and the others. Yui Kodai Quirk, Size. She is able to change the size of any non-living object she touches. This is incredibly useful. Is there a limit to how big or small she can make an object? How long does the change stay? Could she shrink one object while growing another at the same time? Does she also change the density and weight of the object? Depending on how it works she could carry a large amount of medicine, food, and other supplies into areas that would prove difficult or impossible for a vehicle. She could shrink debris and rubble making rescue work easier and make clearing blocked roads less time-consuming during a disaster. She could carry an arsenal of gadgets without having to worry about weight as much. It could also be a great offensive tool as even a pebble could become a boulder. Kajiro Bondo Quirk, Semidine. His quirk lets him spray large amounts of a fast-drying glue like liquid from the holes in his face. A good quirk for area denial and restraining villains. Bondo seems to have a very quiet nature. Tagaru Kamakiri Quirk, Razor Sharp. He is able to produce large blades from any part of his body. The offensive potential of this quirk is obvious, though I would like to know if he can detach his blades and use them as ranged weapons. Depending on the durability and sharpness he could potentially scale the sides of builds or cliff faces. He could also be good at breaching doors and walls. He is another classmate that has the potential of being a great melee fighter. Manga Fukudashi Quirk, Comic. He can materialize onomatopoeia which manifests the effects of the word. It's a quirk that is mainly limited by his creativity. Offensive, defense, support, rescue as long as he can talk, he could be effective in the situation. Ryaiko Yanagi Quirk, Poltergeist. She has a telekinetic quirk like mom. But Yanagi's quirk allows her to control not just objects but people as well. But she has a weight limit and a maximum range. Could her weight limit be improved? Could her range? How precise is her control? Does she have any limitations in regards to the number of objects that she can control at once? Could she catch projectiles like bullets in midair? Even if the limitations for her quirk are fixed, it is still a versatile quirk that is useful for whatever type of hero she wants to be. Jiroda Shishida Quirk, Beast. Jiroda's quirk allows him to transform into a large, monstrous beast man which increases his strength, speed, durability, and his senses. However, he becomes more animalistic mentally as well. He can also choose to partially transform certain parts of his body thus gain some of the benefits without the feral mental state. He could track down villains with his augmented senses, making him an asset during a pursuit or manhunt. 
depending on his level of control, he could become quite a skilled combat hero. After introductions were finished, Vlad led the class to the auditorium, where they took their seats near the front. Class 1 should have been sitting next to them, but they were nowhere to be seen. Nezu seemed to ignore the fact that an entire class was missing. Nezu simply started his speech. The speech itself was long, boring, and rambling. Some of the students seated behind Izuku fell asleep. However, Nezu's speech was interrupted twice, both times by loud and very familiar explosions roughly an hour apart. Izuku flinched horribly at the sound, which some of his classmates did notice. Nezu for his part seemed very annoyed at the interruptions. But he finished his speech and the Gen Ed students were allowed to go back home, while the support students left with power loader to the support department studios. Class 1B was led to another room where one by one each student got to talk to their teachers after which they were sent to speak with Hound Dog. Izuku had gone full fanboy excitedly asking for autographs from the pro heroes. Everything went smoothly except for when Izuku met Midnight the R-rated heroine. The seductive heroine quickly discovered Izuku was easily flustered and began to tease him mercilessly. However, unlike Setsuna Midnight was on another level of teasing. The R-rated heroine quickly caused Izuku to faint. She then proceeded to place Izuku's head on her lap and left it there as she continued to talk with the other students as if nothing was amiss. This caused most of the male students to get jealous and caused the male teachers to sigh dramatically. Feels like watching a fox mess with a rabbit. Added Prezentmik his tone full of amusement. I almost feel sorry for the kid, it seems Midnight's taken a liking to him. Think he'll be okay Vlad? Asked Snipe looking at the blood hero. He'll be fine, said Vlad looking at Midnight nonchalantly speaking with Setsuna as Midnight played with Izuku's hair. The two girls seem to be hitting it off. I hope, finished Vlad. Why do I feel like Midoriya is going to be involved in a lot of headaches in the future? Thought Vlad for a moment. Once all the other students had finished meeting the teachers and were heading to Hound Dog. All right, Nimiri you've had your fun. The boy still needs to talk to Ryo before lunch. So, wake him up, spoke Vlad approaching them as the other teachers filed out of the room. Awa, come on Sekijiro he's just so cute, can I keep him a little longer? Replied Midnight in an overdramatic cute tone trying to sway him. Vlad gave her an unamused look. Fine, not like I won't be able to mess with him later. Spoke Midnight with an almost comical pout. Midnight grabbed a small container of smelling salts from her belt and used it on Izuku. Izuku's eyes snapped open, he was looking right at Midnight's face and he quickly realized where he was. Did you have a good nap? Asked Midnight with a sultry grin. Izuku's face turned bright red at her words. Before Midnight could once again make Izuku faint Vlad interjected. Nidoriya, you still need to talk with the guidance counselor. Come on, barked out Vlad as he turned to leave the room. Izuku shot to his feet. Yes, Vlad Sensei, responded Izuku as he fell into step behind his teacher. Izuku glances back at Midnight before he left the room. The R-rated heroine sent him a sexy wink and blew a kiss at him. Izuku let out a quiet squeak and he hurried out of the room to catch up with Vlad Sensei. 40 Hound Dog's Office 40 Izuku sat in a surprisingly comfy chair in front of Hound Dog's desk. The room looked more like a psychologist's office from TV than a school guidance counselor. The hero's muzzle was off, revealing his canine features. The guidance counselor was pulling up Izuku's file on his computer. Izuku had taken some of the gummy candies the hound dog had offered him from the bowel on the desk. All right, let's start. First, I'd like to once again welcome you to the UA Hero course. I'll be your guidance counselor for your time here at UA. Spoke hound dog a polite grin on his face. I I feel honored. H hound dog sensei could I get an autograph? Spoke Izuku stuttering out his words. The hunting dog hero quickly wrote his signature in the autograph book. So, as you may know, there are broadly three categories of heroes combat, support, and rescue. Combat heroes focus on taking down villains and providing security for events and VIPs. Rescues heroes focus on dealing with a multitude of different scenarios, natural disasters, fires, floods, cats and trees, and much more. Support heroes are the broadest category, healing, tracking of villains, information gathering, performing investigations, counseling, interrogation, and transport of villains to prison are just some examples. But these categories are loose classifications some heroes fit into more than one category, like me for example I combat villains. But I also take part in manhunts and search and rescue operations, while other heroes like 13 focus purely on rescue work. Do you have an idea of what you'd like to do as a hero? It's fine if you don't have a solid idea. Asked Hound Dog. Izuku only took a few moments to respond. All Might was the first hero that really I inspired me. I W want to be like HM, doing all K kinds of hero work. Replied Izuku, determination in his eyes, despite the stutter in his voice. A very common statement. A lot of students that come to UA also want to emulate All Might. Tell me Izuku do you plan on getting an international hero license like All Might? Asked Hound Dog professionally. Izuku took a lot longer to think of his answer. He even began to mutter to himself. Hound Dog did not interrupt the teen's train of thought. The hero simply sat quietly, patiently waiting for Izuku's response. I H haven't really t thought about that before today. I, I guess I'd like to e-establish him myself in Japan first. Once I have more experience I am might go for an international license. But I'm still not sure spoke Izuku after he stopped muttering. 
It's fine if you've not sure. Less than 200 heroes in all of Japan have their international licenses. Spoke Hound Dog as he typed quickly into the computer, eyes narrowing at the screen. Now, I have some questions about your middle school. If that's fine with you. Continued Hound Dog his tone serious. OT that's fine with me. Responded Izuku nervously as he looked away. Your quirk manifested during the exam. So you were considered quirkless till that moment? Correct. Asked Hound Dog looking right into Izuku's eyes. Why why yes sir. Responded Izuku avoiding eye contact. As he starting to worry about where this was going. According to your file, you had frequent visits to the nurse's office for burns, bruises, and lacerations. However, the causes of these injuries are not in any of the reports. Could you tell me about that? Asked Hound Dog, who already had his suspicions on the answer. I I have just always been sea clumsy and I often I'll look for hero fights around town. Spoke Izuku lying as best he could, in other words horribly. Hound Dog didn't believe a word. But I don't have any evidence or probable cause to look more into this matter right now. Thought Hound Dog frustrated. The hero let out a long sigh it's only the first day, I'll get him to open up later. Thought Hound Dog who moved on to a few more questions. Soon they had finished and Izuku stood to leave. All right you're done, enjoy your lunch. Spoke Hound Dog. Izuku gave a quick bow and was at the door when Hound Dog spoke again causing the teen to turn toward the hero. Izuku, this is not your old school. If you need anything or need to talk to someone, don't hesitate to come to talk to me or the other teachers. You're a student here, please rely on us. We're here to help you kids. Finished Hound Dog with passion and conviction. T thank you Hound Dog Sensei. I'll be sure to K keep that in him mind. Responded Izuku with another bow and he slipped out of the room. Hound Dog let out another sign. Kids easier to read than a Dr. Seuss book. Not hard to assume why he acts like that, given how people treat the quirkless. Hopefully, that's all in his past now, and he can grow into a good hero unimpeded. But there might be more kids suffering in that school. Thought Hound Dog anger bubbling in his chest. He pulled up another file. I'll have to try and convince Aizawa to let me talk to him. They may get me the information I need. Thought Hound Dog looking at Bekugo's file. Not knowing he wouldn't have to wait long for his probable cause. 40 UA Cafeteria 40. Izuku sat at a large cafeteria table that was situated near a bank of large windows that showed off the school's heavily forested property. Izuku had quickly gotten some food from the cook hero, Lunch Rush who serves as UAS chief. After acquiring his lunch, helping Pony order her food and a quick autobiography from the hero. He was semi-dragged to a table by Pony and Satsuna. The table had the same group of his classmates that sat around him in class. Izuku was sat between Kendo and Pony, while Kami, Satsuna, Kuruwaro, and Kanoko sat on the other side of the table. Jirota and Yanagi were also seated at the table but were further down from Izuku. The teens eagerly dug into the delicious meal. Yum this is SOOO good, spoke Pony as she took another bite of her food with a content smile. To be expected from Lunch Rush. He is the number two food-based hero in the world, commented Izuku with a big smile. Pony simply nodded as her mouth was full. Hey Izuku, exactly how do you know English? Asked Kami her head tilted the side. The girl's question drew the attention of some of the others at the table. I was also curvaceous about that. How do you know English? Asked Pony as she looked at Izuku. Pony, I think you meant curious. Spoke Kendo correcting the horse girl. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you Kendo. Spoke Pony slightly embarrassed as she tapped her fingers against each other. They do bring up a good question. So, care to share? Spoke Setsuna, shifting the table's attention back to Izuku. I w wanted to f follow heroes from all over. I s started to w watch the hero news from d different countries. So, I l learned the l languages to understand them better. Explained Izuku nervously. Exactly how many languages can you speak? Asked Kendo. Izuku had to actively prevent himself from squirming under the gazes of his classmates. S6. Replied Izuku quietly, his words imposing those at the table. T that's amazing. Spoke Kanoko as she nervously fiddled with her hands. So, he's multilingual, it's not that impressive. Thought Kiruaro, keeping himself from rolling his eyes. That's like tot sweet. What are the other languages? Asked Kami as she pulled out her phone. W well I can speak German, or Russian, French, and I Italian. Responded Izuku. His classmate praised his skill. Kendo led the conversion onto the interests and skills of the others as they continued to eat. Um, Yu Yu chan can I ask you s something? Asked Izuku. The girl faced him, a slightly miffed look on her face. Sure, Izuku-kun. But call me Kami. Like I told you to, K. Okay. Responded Kami. Izuku nodded and then he pulled out his notebook from out of seemingly nowhere. I wanted to know, does your quirk work on robots? Asked Izuku excited curiosity in his tone. My quirk only works on people, it works through cameras. But the exam robots worked on their own. Explained Kami, using her quirk to make a tiny chibai of herself and Izuku. We are here. Spoke the two illusions as they struck a few superheroes poses together before they vanished. Izuku's eyes widened in wonder as he saw the little chibis. He started to rapidly write in his notebook and muttering. Izuku looked back up at Kami. So how did you deal with the exam? 
If your quirk didn't work on the robots, asked Izuku. Kami along with Kendo and Setsuna were amused with Izuku's antics. Kami once again used her quirk to bring forth the tiny Chibai Kami and Chibai versions of the villain bots. Easy, I just filled in the forms for special gear and brought a metal bat. The rescue points also helped, spoke Kami the tiny Chibai Kami proceed to beat the villain bots. The tiny doppelganger stood tall on the beaten foes and blew a kiss with a heart right after the illusion vanished. That's really clever, I didn't even consider bringing a weapon, spoke Izuku as he wrote some more. W what are you w writing I is Izuku-kun, asked Kanoko nervously, just notes on C. Kami's quirk along with some of my eye ideas, replied Izuku stuttering out as he stopped writing. Really can I take a peek, sked Kami, Izuku hesitated a moment but passed the girl the notebook. Kami started to look over the notes, but before Kami could respond, Izuku's blood ran cold as he heard. D.K.U. You bastard, yelled a voice over the sound of multiple explosions. Izuku turned his head just enough to see the explosion that blasted him. Izuku crashed into the table shattering it, causing food to go flying everywhere. Black smoke covered part of the cafeteria. Izuku's ears were ringing from the point-blank explosion. He had burns, and he was definitely going to bruise. As the ringing in his ears faded, he felt a hand roughly grab his damaged blazer and haul him up. Izuku looked into the hate and anger-filled eyes of Bakugo. Ta ka kaken. I stutter out Izuku devolving into the same mentality he always did, meek and as non-threatening as possible. Before Izuku could continue to speak Bakugo struck him in the gut, knocking the air out of Izuku. The smell of burnt sugar became more pronounced as fist grabbing his clothes started to smoke. Listen here you quirkle sack of shit. You tell me how you cheated to get in here. And you better say it quick or I'll lfuckin, ohf, yelled out Bakugo until he was hit by an enlarged hand knocking him away from Izuku. Izuku's back flared in pain as he hit the ground again. The smoke cleared and Izuku saw Kendo with Setsuna and Pony on either side of her. They were standing in between him and Bakugo, the three of them covered in soot and bits of food. Pony and Kendo's uniforms were also singed and burnt. Ai ai Izuku are you okay? Asked Kanoko as she and Kami suddenly appeared on either side of him, both in similar disheveled states. They worriedly looked over him and helped him sit up. I thought this school was supposed to be top tier, how'd the asshole get in? Asked Kami rhetorically glaring at the blonde. Fuck you man hands. I won't kill you worthless extras if you hand over Deku. Threatened Bakugo hands popping with explosions as he insulted Kendo. What the hell? Why'd you do that? Spoke Setsuna anger in her tone as she detached pieces of herself in case of a fight. Because you fucking split bitch, I'm going to be number one hero and surpass all might. Naturally I was to get the top spot in the exam. So, there's no way that quirkless waste of space could get my number one slot without cheating. Responded Bakugo equal parts arrogant, angry, and irrational. But Izuku has a quirk. He took out the started pony clearly wanting to defend her new friend. But Bakugo cut her off with an explosion. Shut it cow tits. You, handjob and split bitch get the fuck out of my way. Yelled Bakugo as he charged at them. Die. Yelled out Bakugo throwing out an explosion with both hands at the three girls with no hesitation. The cafeteria went so quiet you could hear a pin drop. When the smoke cleared all that stood there was some kind of blood red shield. Confused Bakugo suddenly found himself on the ground his hands restrained against his body his palms the source of his. Explosions pointed at his own face. The blonde bomber looked up to see Vlad King reabsorb his blood shield. Now, somebody explain what's going on here. Spoke Vlad his tone serious piercing the quiet cafeteria. That crazy chihuahua attacked Izuku while we were having lunch. Answered Setsuna the other students in the cafe all agreeing with her. Bakugo glared angrily at the green-haired girl as she comforted a crying pony. What's your name in class? Demanded Vlad looking at Bakugo. The blonde just clicked his tongue at the question instead he chose to just glare at the extras that dared to oppose him. Sensei, his name is Katsuki Bakugo. He is part of class 1A. Spoke Lita as he and Yuraka approached. Of course, he's one of Aizawa's. Thought Vlad. Thank you and you are. Spoke Vlad as he tried to remember what was in Bakugo's file. I am Tenya Lita and this is Achako Yuraka. Sensei. Responded Lita stiffly as he bowed to the teacher. I'm surprised you're still here. Normally Aizawa's class is dismissed by now. Spoke Vlad, confused and scrutinizing the two students. Some of the class stayed behind to speak with the guidance counselor. We just finished in time to get a little lunch before heading home. Informed Yuraka, explaining why some of class 1 was still on campus. But Bakugo went to the gym on campus to train. Spoke Lita further explaining as his hands moved about. Stay out of this glasses. And you two round face. Yelled Bakugo angry glare at the two. Lita just looked disapprovingly at Bakugo. While Yuraka was wondering if he was calling her fat. Why would you attack another student? Asked Vlad, his tone very cold and serious. To teach that cheating bastard a lesson. Answered Bakugo, looking at Izuku like he wanted to light him on fire. Midoriya, he earned his place in the hero course. Respond Vlad crossing his arms. There's no way the quirkless weakling passed the exam without cheating. Yelled Bakugo violently wiggling on. The floor, Vlad and the students that had seen Izuku were confused. Then Vlad remembered what Nezu had said at the meeting. Midoriya is a late bloomer, he manifested his quirk during the exam. Informed Vlad flatly. 
This caused most of the students to look at Izuku in surprise. However, someone had a very different reaction. Fucking Deku, you've been looking down on me this whole time, haven't you? Keeping your quirk a secret this whole time. I'll fucking kill you, yelled Bakugo trying to free himself. Vlad looked at the kid in front of him, shocked at the level of mental gymnastics and stupidity he had just heard. I don't think you understand how much trouble you're in right now, spoke Vlad getting back on subject and trying to impart the seriousness of the situation. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I used my quirk in public, spoke Bakugo clearly not thinking it was a big deal and not even mention his attack on fellow students. Vlad pinched the bridge of his nose. I remember this kid had good grades, is he really this dense? Does he really not understand? We'll figure it out later, thought Vlad with a sigh. The blood hero hosted Bakugo to his feet keeping a firm grasp on the student. The pro hero looked at his students judging the level of harm done. All of you should head to recovery girl for treatment. If she okays it, you can go to the training field. I have to deal with Bakugo and arrange for replacement uniforms for you all alright, spoke Vlad in a somewhat softer tone. Yes sensei, responded the students. The group covered in food and soot then proceeded out of the cafeteria just as some cleaning robots enter the cafe along with power loader. Quit the mess on the first day, spoke Power Loader with a whistle as the robots picked up what was left of the table and started to clean up the food and soot off the floor. Igari, do you know where Aizawa is? Asked Vlad with a sigh of exasperation. Last I saw him, he was under his desk sleeping. I'll go get him for you, offered Power Loader, wanting to prevent any conflict between the two without any mediators. Thank you, Igari. Please tell him to meet me in principal at Nezu's office, spoke Vlad with a small smile. As he removed, back Hugo's restaurants now that his targets had left. No problem, spoke Power Loader with a wave as Vlad lead Bakugo out of the room. The teen still does not seem to understand his position. 40 UA Outdoor Track Field 40 The group of teens didn't have to spend a lot of time in Recovery Girl's office. The old heroine took detailed notes on their injuries. The most server injuries being second-degree burns and a bruised rib that Izuku suffered. But they were dealt with quickly by Recovery Girl's quirk. The teens were cleared to return to their class, although slightly more tired and with some candy. The entirety of Class 1B stood outside by the athletic field all dressed in their UA gym uniforms. Vlad was already out on the field waiting for them a tablet in his hand. All right everyone before we start, I want to speak about the incident in the cafeteria. Lunkers saw the whole thing, the matter has been more or less dealt with at this point. But some of you may still need to talk to Principal Nezu later. Spoke Vlad in a neutral tone but it was clear he was hiding his displease. Did the guy get expelled? Asked Setsuna her distaste for Bakugo clear in her tone. Izuku squished down the urge to defend his childhood friend. No, he's been given detention for the next two weeks, his parents will be contracted, and if he makes any more trouble, he'd be put in the gen ed course at best and expelled at worst. On top of that, the incident has been noted in his permanent file, spoke Vlad explaining to the students. Those involved seem to accept this punishment all except one. Aye aye is it that a little much, squeaked out Izuku. His words caused everyone to look at him. Kendo and Setsuna, in particular, narrowed their eyes in suspicion at the green-haired boy. He used his quirk outside of training to blast himself from one side of the cafeteria to the other, attacked a student, injured several others, and destroyed school property. He was also about to attack more students when I walked in. On top of that, he seemed not to have any remorse for his action. If he was part of this class, I'd have expelled him on the spot, spoke Vlad with a deadpan voice as he looked at Izuku scrutinizing the teen. Why wasn't he? He acted more like some Madden fanatic than a student of a venerable hero school. Asked Ibarra her displease of Bakugo on full display. Several classmates nodding along with her words. It's not my call, it's up to his homeroom teacher and the principal. Responded Vlad with a sigh. Before he cleared his throat. Let's move on and get started with this assessment. It is the same that you'd take in middle school except I want you all to use your quirks. This is so I can get a feel for where all stand individually and as a group. So, I want all of you to give it your all, get it. Spoke Vlad. His words causing most in the class to get excited. Yes, Vlad Sensei. Replied the whole class with conviction. The assessment started with a 50 meter sprint. Izuku had run with Kamakiri who used his quirk to create makeshift cleats with his blades. While Izuku just ran normally. However, Pony came out the fastest followed shortly after by Honuki, who used his quirk to swim through the ground. The high jump was a tough event, Yanagi used her quirk to fly herself over the bar but she moved slowly and unstably. Subiraba created platforms of solid air to make a staircase for himself. Shishta's legs bulked up slightly and he cleared the bar with ease. Ibarra used her vines to fling herself over the bar and somehow gracefully landed on the mat. Nanga used his quirk to make the onomatopoeia, which acted as a springboard to improve his jump. However, Setsuna simply broke herself apart and floated her pieces over the bar with ease. The repeated sidesteps event was more one-sided. Despite Kanoko using a bunch of springy mushrooms and Manga using spring-like onomatopoeia to bounce back and forth, Ibarra still outdid everyone by using her hair to pull her back and forth. The grip strength test event went by quick and was thoroughly won by Kendo, whose grip strength outdid everyone else by a large margin. The flexibility tests were easily dominated by Setsuna, who showed how easy it is to touch one's toes when you can detach your midsection. 
The only one to even come close to competing with Setsuna was Kami, who showed a surprising level of flexibility that had her classmate questioning if humans are supposed to be able to bend like that. The Wais, Tsuburaba, and Kaibara, in particular, did their best to not be caught, as they were staring very intently at Kami's body. As the tests went by one by one Vlad diligently recorded his students' results. However, he frowned at Izuku's hesitance to use his quirk, which he had guessed would be the case so he sent a quick message with his tablet in between events. The class was down to the last two events the ball throw and the endurance run. One by one the class did the ball throw. Kamakiri grew a large blade in his hand and used it as a makeshift baseball bat. Kendo simply smacked the ball with her enlarged hand. Ibarra used her vine as a makeshift sling to throw the ball. Jiroda threw the ball after enhancing himself with beastly strength. Pony shot out a pair of horns after she had thrown the ball and then used them to hit the ball mid-flight. Setsuna just attached her arm and had it carry the ball to around the 62-meter mark and they had her disembodied arm throw the ball. Ryaiko just used her quirk to throw the ball as hard as she could getting a respectable distance. It was Izuku's turn, and the boy nervously walked to the circle but right before he could follow through with his throw. Midoriya yelled out Vlad Sensei causing Izuku's ball to land only a few meters from him. Yes Sensei, replied Izuku as he notices that Recovery Girl was approaching the class. Listen, I understand your apprehension about using your quirk given you only awakened it recently, but you won't improve by not using it. I asked Recovery Girl to be here for when the backlash hits, so I want you to use your quirk, show your classmates what you can do, spoke Vlad his words motivating Izuku. Please at least try not to hurt yourself too badly, comment Recovery Girl sternly. Do your best Izuku, divided by you can do it, cheered Kami and Pony, trying to motivate Izuku, as he returned to the circle after retrieving the ball. Come on Izuku think, there has to be a way to not hurt my body as much, thought Izuku as he was thought deeply for a solution. Come on already, spoke Kiriwaro startling Izuku out of his thoughts. You should cover your ears, spoke Izuku. Izuku took a breath and moved into the best pitcher's stance he could. Izuku clenched his butt cheeks and yelled form the bottom of his heart. Smash, yelled out Izuku three distinct booms followed in quick succession as wind blasted outward from him. His classmates that had not seen his quirk before stared in shock. Vlad Kendo, Setsuna, and a few of the others were partially shocked as they knew what those distinctive cones of air meant. Did he just throw the ball at Mach 3? Thought Setsuna slack jawed trying to process how the little bundle of nerves she had been teasing could hold so much power. Vlad Sensei I did it, spoke Izuku holding back tears. One of his fingers a dark misshapen purple. A smile split across Vlad's face, roughly ten seconds later Vlad's tablet dinged. This kid, thought Vlad, his smile widened as he showed the class Izuku's results. While Recovery Girl moved to Izuku to treat his injury. 10 kilometers. That's insane. Yelled out Tetsu Tetsu flabbergasted at the result. I'd never guessed that someone like him could have such a crazy strong quirk. Comment ran his tone flat and an eyebrow raised. With the backlash hurts him check out his finger. Man, that's got to hurt. Added Honuki wincing slightly at the dark purple almost black look of the finger. That was awesome Izuku. Sheared pony fist raised in excitement. Chico good job, stuttered out Kanoko quietly. All right everyone, clam down we still have the endurance run to do, spoke Vlad calming down the excited students and had them all line up on the track course. The endurance run lasted the longest out of all the other events as most of the heroes in training were in decent shape. The first to fall was Yanagi, with Kanoko following not too far after the spooky girl. Manga and Yui were the next to run out of steam. Then fell Honuki, Hibara, Kami, and Subiraba. The next to throw in the towel were Bondo, Kaibara, Awase, and Kiruaro. Jirota, Setsuna, and Kamakiri were the next to tire out and had to stop running. Kendo and Tetsu Tetsu both collapsed no longer able to push themselves any further. This left Izuku who was covered in sweat, his training with All Might paying off. Beside him was Pony who was running on all fours and easily keeping pace with Izuku. They glanced at each other both having a competitive glint in their eyes. The two continued to run for another 45 minutes before Izuku had to stop. Pony only took another dozen steps before she too had to stop. With the final event completed the class gathered around Vlad Sensei. Well done everyone you all surpassed my expectations. You're all free to get changed back into your uniforms. Be sure to grab a copy of the syllabus in the classroom before you head home. Those that will be dorming please wait for me in the classroom. All right, you're all dismissed, spoke Vlad with a smile. The class all bowed and scampered toward the changing rooms. You can come out now All Might, stated Vlad. All Might appeared out from his hiding spot behind a nearby tree. Any reason why you were spying on my class? Asked Vlad good naturally to his newest colleague. Well, I wanted to see how young Midoriya would fare in your assessment, replied All Might with a cough embarrassed at being caught spying. Vlad raised an eyebrow wondering why All Might had such an interest in Izuku, but he decided to just ask later. He did well, placed in the top 10 when it comes to the assessment and that's without using his quirk for the most part and being slightly tired from Recovery Girl's earlier treatment. The kid has a lot of potential. Once he has control of that quirk of his he'll give most pros a run for their money, explained Vlad as he showed All Might the results of the assessment. That is if he can stop the backlash from hurting him. The damage done is tremendous, commented Recovery Girl clearly not too pleased with the backlash of Izuku's quirk. 
I'll help him figure it out. I plan on looking through the footage of him tonight and tomorrow after his first heroics class to see if I can come up with anything for him. Sorry but I still have to show some students to the dorms. Goodbye and see you tomorrow, spoke Vlad before he politely excused himself and left. Izuku certainly got lucky being placed in Vlad's class. Aizawa wouldn't have been fair with his assessment. Thought all might as he watches Vlad leave. Glad that Izuku would not be unfairly hindered in his development. 40 Boys Locker Room 40 Izuku stood in the boys' changing room, switching into a spare gym uniform given his school uniform was damaged. Excuse me Sir Midoriya, spoke a voice from the locker to Izuku's left. Izuku looked over to see Jirota. Why yes as Shishida, replied Izuku stuttering nervously. I wish to inquire about the brute that assaulted you sans provocation. The ruffian seemed to be familiar with you, asked Jirota adjusting his glasses. Unbeknownst to the boys one of the girls was listening and thanks to her quirk. W.L.K. I mean, that Hugo and I have K.N. know each other since we were little, our moms have been friends since high school, explained Izuku. The boys that were listening into the conversation seemed confused. So, he's like your childhood friend, spoke Tsuburaba making a guess. Izuku just nodded in response. He seems more like a childhood bully to me, spoke Tetsu Tetsu speaking from his experience of defending weaker kids from bullies ever since he got his quirk. Izuku quickly began to defend Bakugo. By the end of it most of his male classmates seemed to be convinced and dropped the subject. However, Setsuna who had been listening in was not. 40. After changing and grabbing a copy of the syllabus, Izuku said goodbye to most of his classmates as they left to return home. Specifically, he said goodbye to Kendo, Yui, Kanoko, and Jirota as the left. This left him along with Setsuna, Kami, Pony, Kaibara, Yanagi, Tsuburaba, and Rin. This was the group of students that would be testing out the dorm system. It makes sense that Rin, Kami, and Pony are here. They're all from out of the country, it's probably cheaper for them to stay in the dorms. I'm just here to learn to be more independent, reasoned Izuku as he went over his notes from the day. A tap on his shoulder made him turn toward Kami. Izuku after class finishes, could you do me a solid by coming with me to the support department? Asked Kami as she twirled some of her hair with her finger. Yes, sure, Biba, why do you need me? Questioned Izuku. Kami tapped on his hero analysis book. Cause I want to see if I can add some of your great ideas for equipment to my costume before they get finished. Explained Kami causally. Uh, are you sure? I don't know why you'd want to, my ideas aren't that good. Spoke Izuku as he looked down, recalling the numerous times he was insulted for the contents of his notebooks. Of course, some of your ideas are things I've never thought of. Your suggestions for equipment are gonna be hella useful. Spoke Kami praising Izuku. I'd be glad to HH help. The greet Izuku a small smile on his face and a warm pride spreading in his core. Thanks a bunch. I appreciate it. Spoke Kami. Izuku spoke to the friends he'd made until Vlad Sensei showed up and led the students to the Class 1B dorms. The dormitories are large buildings with five floors separated into two wings. The building has Class 1B posted above a sign that reads Alliance. The building is circled by low hedge bushes that leave a path open to the entrance. The entrance is comprised of two sets of double doors. Alongside the pathway are two park benches and two towers with lights on them. The first level of the building is white while the upper levels are colored brown on the outside. Welcome to Class 1B's dorms which I call Bastion. The first floor is a common area, as you can see it has a kitchen that's stoked at the end of the week. You're responsible for your own breakfast and dinners. You'll also find a laundry room in the communal showers here on the ground floor. Each floor above has eight rooms divided between the two towers. Every dorm room has its own air conditioning, toilet plus sink, bed, mini fridge, closet, and a balcony. You all will have access to the weight gym in the school's main building. Should any of you wish to leave campus to visit family or anything else you are to inform me or another staff member before you leave and you must carry your student ID so you can get back on campus. You are all expected to be back in the dorms by the 10 p.m. curfew. If you plan to stay off campus overnight you are required to fill out a form. Any questions? Asked Vlad after he gave the student a short tour of the ground floor. How are the dorm rooms going to be divided up sensei? Are we going to be separated by gender? Asked Rin politely, as he stood next to the boxes of his things. No, Nezu wants to test several different dorm styles. Class 1A is separated by gender. Nezu assigned your dorm rooms himself. You can find your room assignments on the whiteboard on the wall over there. Replied Vlad pointing at one of the walls. Izuku and the other students looked at the room assignments. While he was looking at the board Izuku felt an arm wrap around his shoulders. Looks like we're neighbors Izuku. I hope we get along very well. Spoke Setsuna as she whispered sultry into Izuku's ear. Izuku covered his face with his hand trying to hide the fact that his face was turning hot rod red. Setsuna stepped back from Izuku laughed into her hand. Yeah, looks like I'm next to you Setsuna. Spoke Pony as she hugged the green haired girl. Bummer nobody else is on my floor. At least I'm in the room above Izuku. Spoke Kami lamenting her room placement. You're free to always hang out in my room. Spoke Pony trying to cheer her fellow American up. Inagi suddenly appeared right beside Izuku startling the boy. I'll also be your neighbor. Please take care of me. Spoke Yanagi as she bowed respectfully. Why yes, P please take care of me as well. Replied Izuku as he mirrored her bow. 
If you have any other questions, my room is here on the ground floor. Oh, that reminds me, spoke Vlad before sticking two fingers in his mouth and whistle. Woof woof. Baked out a dark green bulldog bounded into the room and took a spot beside Vlad a collar with bolts around its neck. Vlad petted his dog much to its joy. They look so alike, thought the students looking at the similarities between their teacher and his dog. I'd like you all to meet my dog Frank, and before you ask, he ran into someone with a quirk that changes color. That's everything I needed to say. You're all free to start moving in and feel free to explore the campus. Just make sure to be back by curfew. Finished Vlad as he left the room, Frank, right on his heels. Come on, if we help each other, we can all be moved in quicker. Spoke Pony not noticing her wrong word course. The students all started to grab their things and followed the enthusiastic American. Setsuna laughed as Izuku tried his best to correct Pony's word choice without dying from embarrassment. With everyone helping it didn't take long to move everyone's boxes to their respective rooms. The students all unpacked their own things, as nobody wanted people who they just met to be unpacking their private stuff. It didn't take too long for Izuku to unpack his things. He had only brought some of his stuff, clothes, his computer, his console with some of his favorite games, decorations for the room, a copy of his mom's cookbook, plenty of notebooks, and his training gear. Altogether it only took up five boxes. He wasn't too worried if he forgot something as it would only take a quirk 30 minutes train ride to get home. Just as he finished placing the last of his posters up on the wall, someone knocked on his door. Izuku walked over to answer the door, revealing Kami dressed in jeans and a simple shirt that had a smirking man and a cloak with energy that read you can certainly try. In the palm of his hand, Hey Izuku, you're all done moving in, asked Kami. Izuku stepped out of his room closing his door behind him as he responded. Why yes I'm finished, wanna head to the support department now, responds Izuku with only slight stuttering. Sure, I already got the directions to the support department from Vlad Sensei. Let's go, spoke Kami holding out a piece of paper that had a hand-drawn map. 40 UA Main Building 40. The two students walked side by side through the halls of UAS Main Building heading to the support department. Kami and Izuku spoke back and forth with Izuku asking about California, more about her quirk, and also speculating about what UA had in store for them. Eventually, they arrived at a heavy-looking reinforced metal door that had a sign next to it marking it as the support studios. Izuku reached for the door handle. Boom. For the second time, that day Izuku was caught in an explosion. As he recovered he felt two soft objects on his back and another soft but heavy weight on his chest. Once he could see again he discovered two things. One there was a girl with pink hair laying on top of him and second, his head was resting on Kami's breasts. While Izuku was busy imitating a tomato the girl on two of him had recovered. Oh, customers, spoke the girl as she looks up at Izuku, showing off her crosshair-like eyes and her manic smile. Hatsum, coffee blew up the support studio with that device. What were you thinking? He yelled power loader waving smoke out of his face. The teacher noted the three students' position. First midnight now this, the kid's lucky. Or maybe cursed. Thought power loader. Look sensei we got customers. They're probably here to request some super sweet babies. Can I handle this please? Shouted out Hatsum as she jumped to her feet excitedly. She turned to the teacher begging. Izuku in the meantime had stood embarrassed and worried Kami would be mad at him. I'm so sorry Kami. Are you alright? Spoke Izuku offering a hand, concern, and embarrassment clear in his tone. I'm all good and no need to apologize, not like you caused the explosion. Responded Kami nonchalantly as she took his offered hand. Sorry about that Hatsum decided to activate a deceive without doing a test run first. You two are from Vlad's class, right? What do you need? Asked Power Loader kindly leading them inside the studio, which had dozens of little flying drones currently cleaning up after the explosion. I was wondering if I could add some equipment to my costume. Asked Kami. Hatsum was bouncing on her feet her manic smile widening at Kami's words. What kind of equipment are you thinking about? Asked Power Loader. Kami pulled Izuku over to her and had him show Power Loader her entry in his notebook. Izuku explained the equipment and ideas he had to Power Loader who was taking his own notes. Let's see here. Utility belt with pretty standard gear, custom gas grenades, and mines that can use your quirk. What weapon would you want? Questioned Power Loader looking over his notes already thinking on how to fabricate the devices. I'm not really trained with weapons. I was thinking of something collapsible and easy to use. So like a baton or maybe a bow staff. Responded Kami not certain what would be best. We'll make both for you since they're relatively easy to make. So you can see which works best for you. The other requests are all doable. But we'll need to take some measurements for the belt and some of the other changes. Explained Power Loader. Kami nodded in agreement. Hatsum, take her measurements and help her design a utility belt. Make sure to take her requests into account and don't cause trouble. Spoke Power Loader sternly not wanting another explosion. On it, responded Hatsum quickly grabbed Kami's wrist and began dragging the girl away. Thanks for the help Izuku. I'll see you back at the drums K. Spoke Kami in English as she was dragged into an adjacent room. What about you? You have any requests? Asked Power Loader glance at the doorway when he heard metal shifting and May laughing. No I don't have any requests sensei. I was just here to help out Kami. I'll be heading back to the dorms now. 
responded Izuku politely. Power Loader just shrugged his shoulders. All right, then have a good rest of your day. I got to make sure Hatsum isn't going overboard, spoke Power Loader, walking toward the adjacent room. Izuku quietly left the support studio a warm feeling in his chest from helping a classmate. 40 UA Class 1B Dorms The Bastion 40 When Izuku made it back to the common room of the dorms, he found it empty bearing Sestuna and Ryaiko who walked in from upstairs at the same time he had come in from the front door. Hey Izuku, weren't you supposed to be at the support department with Kami? Or were you just that excited to see me again, you naughty boy? Asked Setsuna as she neared him purposely swaying her hips with a massive teasing grin on her face. I it's and not like tea that they need to do some measurements. So see Kami said I should come back. Hurriedly explained Izuku, red as a tomato at Setsuna words. The short shorts and the tight-fitting Rukyu shirt Setsuna was wearing was not making it any easier for Izuku. Setsuna laughed at his reaction. You're just too easy to mess with, spoke Setsuna when her laughter died down she slung her arm over his shoulder and drew him closer, her action causing his expression to magnify tenfold. Calm down I don't want you faint like with midnight. Well at least not yet that is, I might do that later. For now, Yanagi and I were planning on cooking dinner for everyone, continued Setsuna gesturing to Yanagi who had been quietly observing him with her unique posture. Hey hello, Yanagi-san. W would you too like some H help with the cooking, spoke Izuku trying to ignore the feeling of Setsuna's body pressed into his side. You know how to cook, asked Setsuna looking at him one of her eyebrows raised. Oh only a little, I mainly just helped my mom, explained Izuku quietly. We appreciate your offer of assistance and graciously accept. Working together will make our endeavor more expedient. Thank you Midoriya, spoke Yanagi, eloquently her hands moving gracefully as she spoke. Setsuna and Izuku stared at the quiet gray-haired girl it took a moment before they processed her words. All right, then let's get started, spoke Setsuna as she, Izuku, and Yanagi all entered the kitchen. They took stock of their ingredients and decided what they were going make. Kami had returned as they were preparing the kitchen. The American girl was covered in soot and grease. She wordlessly passed by them to go get cleaned up. As the three busily began cooking dinner the other students filtered into the living room. Soon after their classmates started to argue about what they would watch on the TV. The argument grew distracting as Kaibara, Tsuburaba, and Rin argued back and forth on what to watch. The three fought over the remote as Pony simply watched the three argue not having enough confidence in her Japanese to intervene. The argument stopped when Setsuna's disembodied hand snatched the remote from them. All right, how about you deal with this after we eat? Because the food's ready, spoke Setsuna surprisingly sternly. Pony was sent to go get Kami once they returned everyone proceeded to sit at the dinner table and Yanagi served the food. The meal went by quickly and after a few thank you most everyone left to return to their rooms. Izuku feeling that he hadn't really helped enough with the cooking had volunteered to do the dishes. Thank you Izuku that's so sweet, spoke Setsuna in Izuku's ear despite the fact that she was across the room. Izuku felt a quick feeling on his cheek. One of Izuku's hands shot to his face. Izuku was torn between embarrassment and wonder as Setsuna's month flew back to the rest of her body somehow laughing dispute the fact it wasn't connected to her lungs. Setsuna stepped into the elevator and gave him a wink just as the elevator door closed. She going to make my heart burst if she keeps that up. But that was the first time a girl kissed my cheek. Not counting mom, thought Izuku as he calmed down and started to wash the dishes. But when he reached for a towel to dry the first plate, it floated off the holder and the plate was pulled out of his hand. That's when he noticed Ryaiko moving to stand next to him. I wish to offer my assistance to repay you early kindness, spoke Ryaiko as she avoided eye contact, her tone flat. Oh, sure thank you, why Yanagi, responded Izuku. The two teens continued cleaning the dishes together. Izuku was surprised that he was so relaxed and comfortable around Yanagi. Izuku smiled contently to himself, enjoying this quiet moment and the warm feeling in his chest, not noticing how the girl beside him kept stealing glances at him. The very edges of her lips curing slightly upward in a nearly unnoticeable smile. 40 UA Main Building 40 Izuku's morning started with his normal run followed by a workout in the school's gym, after which he showered and ate breakfast with his classmates. The day was filled with ordinary school topics. The only difference was they were being taught by pro heroes. Lunch had been a tense affair as his friends stared down Bakugo when he entered the cafeteria. The glare Bakugo focused solely on Izuku clearly showed how much the blonde wanted to beat Izuku and his friends into the ground. Luckily Vlad Sensei along with Midnight had decided to eat their lunches in the cafeteria. When Bakugo noticed the teachers he just angrily sat on the other side of the cafe alone by himself. Most of Class 1 sat amongst themselves not too far from Class 1B. After that stressful lunch, Izuku along with the rest of his class eagerly awaited the beginning of their basic hero training class. The room was full of chatter as the students discussed what they could be doing and which hero would be teaching them. I am here, coming through the door like a hero. Yelled All Might as he burst into the room dramatically. It's All Might. I thought he'd be teaching the upperclassmen. Spoke Juzo clearly happy at the prospect of being taught by the number one hero. He's gonna be our teacher this year. This is going to be awesome. Commented Setsuna showing off her sharp teeth with a big smile. Oh yeah. He's definitely going to make us into manly heroes. Yelled out Tetsu Tetsu fist clenched and accidentally activating his quirk in his excitement. 
That's not his normal costume. Is it an older style? Asked Kanoko quietly in awe of the number one hero. Yeah, that's his Silver Age costume. Answered Kendo as All Might stands behind the podium. Welcome to the most important class at Ua High. Think of it like heroing 101 here you will learn the basics of being a pro and what it means to fight in the name of good. Let's get into it. Started All Might posing heroically as he reveled a card that read battle. Today's lesson will pull no punches. Battle training. But one of the keys of being a hero is looking good. Continued All Might as he pointed toward briefcases coming out of the wall. These were designed for you based on your quirk registration forms and the requests you sent in before school started. Now get yourself suited up and then meet me at training ground beta. Finished All Might, striking his iconic hero pose. Yes sir, responded the students as they eagerly went to grab their costumes and left to quickly go get changed. 40 training ground beta 40. The boys of class 1B stood together in front All Might waiting for the girls to arrive. So the exercise could begin. While the boys waited Izuku had taken out his hero notebook and added his classmates' costumes to their entries in his notebook. One common critique he could see with many of the boys' costumes is a lack of storage for first aid supplies as they would be useful for patching up not just yourself, but also other heroes and civilians. Izuku's hero costume consisted of a green full-body jumpsuit that his mother had made. Yue had the suit reinforced with Kevlar armor for added protection. He had a red utility belt that contained medical supplies, food, water, and a pair of specialized handcuffs. He also wears elbow and knee pads, along with gloves and his favorite red boots. He has a respirator with a makeshift smile on it that resembles All Might's smile, and Izuku wears a hood with long ear protrusions that look like a pair of rabbit ears. Hero Analysis for the Future Number 14, UA Class on B. Yosu Oasis' hero costume consists of a baggy full-body suit, its collar passing his chin. He wears shoulder pads and a bag on his belt in which he keeps various items to aid his quirk. Senkaibara's hero costume consists of a windbreaker with rings around the base of the neck and arms. Over this, he wears a large trench coat and gloves. Tagaru Kamakiri's hero costume consists of a large dark cloak, plain black trousers, and boots. He has a mask around his eyes and a zigzag pattern on his shirt. Shihai Kiruaro's hero costume consists of a simple black jumpsuit with light shoes and a large wristband on his left arm with three rectangular indentations. Jiro Shishida's hero costume consists of a regular pair of pants, no shirt, and a pair of stylized goggles in place of his normal glasses. He also wears a specialized collar that monitors his vitals. Kosai Tsuburaba's hero costume consists of a simple, light-colored jacket with matching pants, a dark shirt underneath, and he wears large boots with cylindrical shapes on the soles. Tetsu Tetsu's hero costume consists of a dark green jumpsuit, cut off just below his chest, with some small, silver-rimmed holes in the lower section of his baggy pants and black boots with metal soles, heels, and front plating. He has steel straps over his shoulders and under his arms, made up of multiple pieces, which connect at a red oval in the center of his chest, with two thinner bands around his biceps and a small plate on either side of his waist. He also wears a metal jaw guard around his face with the letters Fee stamped on a plate on each side of his face. Manga's hero costume consists of a black shirt with light-colored sleeves and light pants covered by a series of ink bottle-like pieces of armor around his torso and legs. He wears a belt with manga panels, elbow underlength gloves, and his mask resembles a manga page template. Huryu Rin's hero costume consists of light-colored knee-high boots, a dark vest with white clouds across it, and a collar that covers his chin. He has a belt tied around his waist with pouches on the side and he also wears large gloves and a visor on his head. His outfit reminds me of a Jiangxi. Kajiro Bondo's hero costume consists of a pale, slightly baggy suit. Around his neck, wrists, and waist, he wears circular accessories which resemble the lower part of the cap of a bottle of glue, and around his ankles slightly thinner, taller versions of these. Juzo Honuki's hero costume consists of a dark bodysuit with a set of armor over the top and a mask that covers the face. Juzo's helmet is more round and elliptical, tinted black with orange lines supporting the sides. The helmet does not cover his entire head, some tufts of hair around the back of his head and chin are still visible. His chest plate is made up of three pieces which are held on by two thick metal straps going over his shoulders, along with a jewel-shaped plate supported between them. He wears orange vambraces and plates placed over his thighs, calves, and upper arms. He also sports a pair of elevated, green, and orange boots with pipe-like shafts on his feet, white gloves on his hands, and white knee pads. It looks like a very tog costume, but I feel something more lightweight would work better for him, since it won't impede his speed. Perhaps it could also be streamlined to reduce drag for when he swims through the material he's softened. Hey, you guys are looking heroic. Love the bunny ears Izuku, spoke Setsuna as she and the other female classmate exited the tunnel. Her voice drew all the guys' attention. Several of the guys were not subtle as they checked out the girls as for Izuku he decided to record the girls' costumes in an attempt to keep himself from fainting on the spot. However, some of his thoughts leaked into the entries. Itsuka wears a turquoise knee-length kippow, over which she has a black double-breasted corset, ending just below her breasts. She also sports black short pants under the kippow. 
For accessories, she wears a loose brown utility belt around her hips, a satchel attached at the back, a thin black domino mask around her eyes, and white-heeled navy blue boots with wide vamps that reach down to her toes, filled in with white slips. Her costume really shows off her beautiful yet toned physique. She must have worked very hard. Ibarra's hero costume consists of a plain white robe and black knee-high boots. It is a simple outfit that makes her look like she stepped out of a Renaissance painting in a museum. Yui's hero costume consists of a simple red bodysuit with a white collar trim, a matching V pattern running over her chest and around her upper arms, which also includes a short white skirt with a red design at the front, dipping so it follows the one in her chest. She wears plain van braces, as well as a hat which resembles the front of a baseball cap, colored red with white U-shaped lines around the sides, with a metal piece resembling a fin attached at the back of the strap around her head. She has a belt at her waist and straps around her shoulders, what appears to be an oval-shaped gemstone set between them on her chest, each adorned with small pouches. I really like this costume. It reminds me of the old Ultra 7 series. Yui despite her neutral demeanor looks. I feel like she is actually very nervous. I want to help but how? Ponies wears a horse halter around her head with a lead rope dangling from the back, and her outfit resembles a jockey uniform, consisting of an orange skin-tight shirt with paler markings around her chest and stomach, with matching colored pants, along with a pair of fingerless gloves. She wears belts secured around her collarbone, biceps, and lower torso, and boots that not only guard her hooves but also have stirrups attached on either side. Her costume fits well with her quirk and appearance. It's uniquely pony and looks great on her. Kinoko's hero costume consists of a turtleneck dress with long sleeves and furred cuffs, which is decorated with a red and white fly agaric pattern, matching the one on her mushroom cap-shaped hat. She wears pale pink knee-high boots with thick tan soles and frilled shafts, patterned with the same fly agaric as her dress, and around her waist is a dark brown belt with a large golden buckle. Her costume reminds me of a witch out of some fairy tale but I don't remember the witch from the book being so cute. Riaiko's hero costume consists of a white, knee-length kimono with a furred collar, three dark straps around her waist, knee-high socks, and a black mask that covers her face from the bridge of her nose down. Her costume gives her an ethereal feeling, like some otherworldly beauty. Kami's hero costume consists of a simple black catsuit with blending pattern lines and a zipper running down the middle, left slightly down. She wears a pair of white gloves with cat claws and white-heeled knee-high boots, patterned with gray lines, as well as a loose black collar lined with metallic plates. She also wears a white utility belt and some tactical rigging around one of her thighs that hold her collapsible weapons. Lastly, she has a white and black tail along with a black communication device that resembles cat ears on top of her head, perhaps playing homage to a cat-themed hero. Altogether she looks like a perfect mixture of beauty and cuteness. Setsuna's hero costume consists of a blue, scaly mask over her eyes, a simple bodysuit with a matching design, and black knee-high boots. She wears fingerless gloves with orange, three-piece wrist guards, and a belt around her waist with what looks to be a jewel embedded into the center. She looks so mature and, I never expected that your comments would be so sweet Izuku, spoke Setsuna in a teasing tone, her voice snapping Izuku out of his thoughts. The girl was standing beside him looking at his notebook. Izuku jumped in surprise and embarrassment, caused his notebook to go flying. I am as sorry. I I just um, stuttered Izuku flustered at his predicament. Setsuna stop it, spoke Kendo sternly as she and the others approached with Izuku's notebook. Setsuna shrugged a bit disappointed that she could not tease Izuku further. But she was all smiles a moment later. Here is your journal Midoriya-san, spoke Ryaiko politely as she used her quirk to float his notebook into his hands. T thank you Yanagi-san, replied Izuku as he put his notebook away. By the way, you're a very good artist, spoke Kendo complimenting the sketches she saw in the notebook. However, her cheeks had a slight red hue to them. Izuku I love your costume. I especially like, the bunny ears they're so cute, spoke Pony in English. Her mood was more bubbly than normal as she commented on his hood. She brings up a good question. Why do you have rabbit ears on your costume? Asked Kami, her words causing most of the class to focus on Izuku. Young Midoriya, I know you're a fan, but you're way too obvious. Thought All Might looking at Izuku's costume specify the large grin on his mask and the protrusions on his hood that to All Might resembled his own hair. They're supposed to be like Mirko's ears. She's the first hero I ever meet in person. It was back when she was still a sidekick, ever since then I've been a fan of her. Respond Izuku rubbing the back on his head as he recalled getting his first hero autograph. That's hella sweet, I'm a big fan of the wild, wild pussycats, that's why I added these. Naya, spoke Kami showing off the tail and ears by striking a pose like the cat-themed hero team. I'm pretty sure I almost died from cuteness just now, thought Izuku a blush on his face. Listen up, they say clothes make the pros young ladies and gentlemen and behold you are the proof. Take this to heart from now on you are all heroes in training, spoke All Might getting the class's attention. Look at you, you're getting me all revved up. You all look so cool, spoke All Might complimenting the teens. Now shall we get started you bunch of zygotes. Let's move on to combat training. Continued All Might striking a pose. Now most of the villain fights you see on the news take place outside. 
but statistical speaking run-ins with the more dastardly villains take place indoors. Think about it backroom deals, home invasions, secret underground lairs. The truly intelligent villains stay hidden in the shadows. For this training exercise you'll be split into teams of good guys and bad guys and fight two-on-two -two indoor battles. Explained All Might. Tanoko raised her hand tentatively to get All Might's attention. My eye isn't this a little bit too advanced. Questioned Kanoko nervously. The best training is what you get on the battlefield. But remember you can't just punch a robot this time, you're dealing with actual people now. Replied All Might pulling out a script. The situation is this villains have stolen a nuclear missile and hidden it somewhere in their hideout. The heroes must try and foil their plans. To do that the good guys either have to cack the evildoers or recover the Misli. Likewise, the villains win if they protect the Misli or capture the heroes. Time is limited and will chose teams by drawing lots. Explained All Might as he pulled out a box of lots. Why are we drawing lots of all things? Asked Tetsu Tetsu confused along with Manga whose head had become a question mark. Think about it a pro often has to team up with heroes from other agencies on the spot. So you have to be prepared to work alongside someone you may not know anything about. Explained Izuku. The class understanding his reasoning. Ah, I get. Sorry for interrupting All Might Sensei. Apologize Tetsu Tetsu with a bow. No sweat. Let's draw. Spoke All Might with a thumbs up. Teams. Team Izuku and Kanoko. Team Biosu Awais and Ryaiko Yanagi. Team Sikosai Tsuburaba and Juzo Honuki. Team Dikajiro Bondo and Manga Fukudashi. Team Iitsuka Kendo and Satsuna Takage. Team Fi Baris Shizaki and Jurota Shishida. Team G Tetsu 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 and Yui Kodai. Team H Pony Tsunotori and Tagaru Kamakiri. Team Isen Kaibara and Shihai Kurwaro. Team JK and Ren. Now for the matchups. Spoke All Might as he pulled out two more lot boxes to decide the matchups. Matchups Team A Heroes vs. Team J Villains. Team E Heroes vs. Team I Villains. Team F Heroes vs. Team G Villains. Team B Heroes vs. Team C Villains. Team D Heroes vs. Team H Villains. Alright, the teams are set frisked up. Teams A and J follow me, everyone else head to the monitoring room. Ordered All Might. Yes, sir, replied the students, most left heading to the monitoring room. The reaming four Izuku, Kanoko, Kami, and Rin followed All Might to the test building. Um, I I Izuku, spoke Kanoko looking down, so her costume's hat blocked the view of her face completely. Yes, Komori-san, spoke Izuku not noticing that All Might was paying attention to his conversation. Did you really think I look CC cute in my costume? Asked Kanoko quietly. Izuku blushed bright red. Why yes I do, responded Izuku quietly looking anywhere but her. Kanoko placed her hands on her cheeks as she blushed. A smile broke out on her face and warmth spread in her chest at his words. Kids got better luck with the ladies than I ever did at that age. Thought All Might. He chuckled quietly as he watched his flustered successor interact with his shy classmate. After a few more minutes they made it to the test building. All right villains you have a five minutes head start. Heroes you're not allowed to enter the test building. But besides that you're free to use the five minutes as you wish. Oh, and here are copies of the building's layout. I shall call out when you can enter, spoke All Might, handing the teens the building blueprints. Tami and Rin immediately entered the building and All Might left for the monitor room. What else should we do? Asked Kanoko. Izuku looked over the building blueprints and then pulled his hero notebook seemingly out of nowhere. Tami will make this difficult, especially with her new traps. She could use her quirk to stall us until time runs out it will also make us easier to capture. There's no guarantee my mask will protect me from her quirk. As for Rin all through he is formidable, he could easily be taken out by your quirk or stalled. Responded Izuku reasoning through a plan as he analyzed the area. Wouldn't her quirk also affect her teammate? Commented Kanoko hoping to contribute. You're right. They'll most likely split up in that case. Kami will stall us on the first or second floor. While Ring guards the bomb. So if. We spoke Izuku as he descended into muttering. He suddenly slammed his notebook shut. I have a plan. I'm sorry but you won't really need to use your quirk. However, it won't work without you. Will you trust me? Spoke Izuku offered out his hand as he looked at Kanoko with an expression that made her heart skip to beat and butterflies to flutter in her stomach. Yes, I will. Responded Kanoko. Izuku took her hand and started to pull her across the street as he began telling her the plan. 40 in the monitoring room. 40. The monitoring room was dark and the students eagerly watched the screens that are showing their classmates. Most attention was on the villains as they set the bomb on the fourth floor. After which Kami left the room and started to set up mines and traps all over the lower floors. Before she set up an ambush near the staircase connecting the first and second floors. Hey what are Midoriya and Komori doing? Questioned Tetsu Tetsu drawing everyone's attention. The class watched in confusion as they watched the hero team climb the fire escape of the building across the street from the test building. But after a few moments, they moved back to the front door. What are you up to Izuku? Spoke Setsuna softly to herself as she tried to deduce what Izuku was planning. Start. The heroes may enter the villain's lair. Announced All Might as he pulled out a notepad and pencil. I can't play favorites young Midoriya. I have to judge your performance just like any other student. Thought All Might as his eyes focused on his successor. 40 test building 40. Kami became tense when All Might started the test. She hid on the second floor waiting for the heroes to arrive. 
Bang. The sound of a door slamming open on the first floor caught her attention and a rush of air blew through the stairwell and the hallway. But she didn't hear anything, no footsteps, no talking, none of her traps were triggered. She was about to let Rin know what was going on when. Shatter. What? Get up here. Qui dot 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 guh. Spoke Rin. Panic in his voice before his communication cut off. Kami sprang from her hiding stop and started to run for the stairs. Her you Rin has been captured. Announced All Might. Kami kept running trying to make it to the room they hid the missile in. The missile has been secured. Hero team wins. Announced All Might, his words making Kami stop running. How? Asked Kami to herself confused as to what just happened. Forty several minutes earlier forty. Izuku dragged Kanoko up the fire escape after he explained the plan to Kanoko. So once we get into the room I'll distract the Rin while you secure the missile. That's the plan, any questions? Spoke Izuku wrapping up his explanation. As they stop moving up the fire escape. How are we going to know where they placed the missile? Asked Kanoko. Izuku simply pointed at the test building across the street. When Kanoko looked, she saw easily spotted the missile through a large bank of windows. She could even see Kami leave the room, and Rin locking the door and placing something near the door. He then moves debris that was spread throughout the room in between the door and the missile before choosing a spot and standing guard. Kanoko looked back at Izuku, who was wearing a knowing smile. Let's go beat those villains, spoke Kanoko also breaking out into a smile. The two quickly moved back across the street. At All Might's signal, Kanoko loosened the front door of the building grabbed a brick from the ground, and then ran back over to Izuku who was positioned underneath the windows that lead to the missile was in. With a bit of hesitation, Kanoko climbed onto Izuku's back. She wrapped her legs around Izuku and wrapped an arm around his neck. Ready? Asked Izuku glancing back at Kanoko with that same look that set her heart skipping. Why yes, answered Kanoko with a nod, a blush on her face from feeling Izuku's physique. Izuku drew on one for all focusing the power into his toes and with a leap Izuku carried them both high above the wind his leap kicked up making the front door slam open. Bang! The two heroes in training rose high over the building. As gravity took hold of them and they began to fall, Izuku positioned both his arms behind them in a position much like Bakugo's. But Izuku's fingers were in a flicking position. As they neared the bank of windows to the Miss Lee room, Kinoko threw the brick as hard as she could, this broke the window. Shatter. Izuku using OFA flicked a single finger from each hand. The burst of air that followed the action propelled the duo through the remains of the window and shredded part of Izuku's gloves, flinching as he used his legs to land but ended up sliding. Kinko hopped off Izuku's back. Their dynamic and unexpected entrance room surprised Rin. What? Get up here qui dot 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 guh. Spoke Rin as he grew scales all over his body. However, he was interrupted when Izuku, who had used another pair of finger flicks to shoot himself directly at Rin, shoulder charged his classmate into a concrete wall hard enough to dent and crack the wall. This knocked the air out of Rin and stunned him. Hurryu Rin has been captured. Announced All Might. Rin looked to see that Izuku had wrapped the capture tape around one of his arms. Before he could even hope about Kami showing up. The missile has been secured. Hero team wins. Announced All Might. Rin's gaze snapped to the Miss Lee to see Kanoko's hand on the missile. Yes this is my lose this time. Commented Rin holding onto his ribs as he stood up. Kanoko helping both him and Izuku stand. 40 Monitoring Room 40 The four students returned to the monitor room and were immediately bombarded by questions and comments. That was Sue Manly. Spoke Tetsu Tetsu, pumped up by the fight. Yeah, you guys were awesome. Commented Awase. Your entry was quite dynamic. Complimented Yanagi as she moved to silently stand beside Izuku. It looked super heroic. Added Tsuburaba. I wasn't expecting you'd do anything like that. Spoke Setsuna clearly impressed given her tone. You certainly set the bar high Sir Midoriya spoke Jurora as he moved to help Midoriya take a seat. Are you alright? Asked Kendo concerned as she looked at his shredded gloves and the four purple misshaped fingers. Cuff. You two should go see Recovery Girl right away. Spoke all my concerned over his students. If it's alright sensei, I'd like to hear the review before leaving. If that is okay, requested Rin politely. All Might contemplates the request for a moment. Very well but you both must go to the infirmary, right after understood. Spoke All Might sternly. The two boys nodded in acceptance. Then, can anyone tell me, who earned the MVP spot? Asked All Might as he looked at the rest of the class. Setsuna was the first to raise her hand. The MVP spot clearly goes to Izuku. He discovered the location of the missile, accurately predicted what the villains would do. He then came up with a plan that would quickly secure the missile with as little combat and collateral damage as possible. Not to say the others didn't do a good job, Izuku was just several steps ahead of them. Explained Setsuna in detail. You're 100% correct. Young Midoriya has shown exceptional strategic thinking, and above all he remained focused on the objective. But well done all of you. Spoke All Might praising not just Izuku but the other students. A few more students made comments and asked questions. After which Rin and Izuku made their way to the infirmary, where Recovery scolded Izuku for cracking a few of R.I.N.'s ribs. Once they finished their treatment they returned to watch the remaining matches. For the second match, the hero team consisting of Itsuka Kendo and Setsuna Takage defeated Senkaibara and Shihai Kiriwaro by distracting the villains allowing Setsuna to secure the missile with one of her disembodied hands. 
The following match between Ibarra Shizaki and Juro Shishida vs. Tetsu 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 Tetsu, Tetsu and Yui Kota was very close as it almost ended by time running out. Yui had barricaded the entrances using her quirk, but Ibarra's quirk proved overwhelming as when the heroes couldn't get in through the normal entrances. She used her vines to burst in from the floor below them, restraining the villains long enough to allow Juro to secure the missile. The first villain victory was the match between Yosu Awase and Ryaiko Yanagi vs. Kosai Tsuburaba and Juzo Honuki. Tsuburaba had made a maze of air walls and baited the heroes into a trap made by Honuki who trapped them in the softened floor and then hardened it again trapping their legs in concrete from there capturing the hero team was easy. The last match between the heroes Kajiro Bondo and Manga Fukudashi vs. the villains Pony Tsunotori and Tagaru Kamakiri ended with another victory for the villain. Pony dramatically played the part of Villainous being loud and overdramatic to draw the heroes to her once they were in place. Pony pinned the two heroes in place by rapidly firing horns to suppress them. While they focused on Pony they failed to notice when Kamakiri stuck from behind, capturing Bondo. When Manga was forced to engage Kamakiri in melee, Pony attacked when his focus shifted. Throughout the matches Izuku was analyzing his classmates, rapidly writing notes, and drawing sketches in his hero notebook. Pony and Kanoko seemed to enjoy Izuku's antics, and they happily watched him mutter away predicting the outcome of each with scary accuracy. However, Kendo had to stop his muttering spree when it seemed to be annoying some of their classmates. That a warp, super work, you all really stepped up to the plate. And we D.I. didn't have any major injuries, besides young Midoriya and young Ren. You should be proud, excellent first day of training all around. That's all for now folks, now watch how a pro exits. Like he's got somewhere to be, spoke All Might praising his students before he sprinted away, leaving the class in awe of his dramatic exit. 40 Teacher's Office is 40. The teacher's office was bathed in the glow of the afternoon sun, a light breeze entering through an open window. All Might now in his oversized yellow suit entered the near-empty room. Only Vlad was in the room, sat behind his desk typing away on his laptop. Hey Vlad, how are you? Spoke All Might greeting his fellow teacher with a wave. Oh hello All Might, I'm doing well. How did your first time teaching go? Responded Vlad politely, turning to give All Might his full attention. It was nerve-wracking for me and I was barely able to hold my muscle form. Besides, that not too bad, only Midoriya and Rin needed a visit to recover a girl. The students performed well for their first hero class. Here are the recordings of the lesson that you asked for. Spoke All Might handing Vlad a flash drive. Thank you All Might. If you run into issues or just need some tips on teaching, feel free to ask. Offered Vlad as he plugged the drive into his laptop to start downloading the video and All Might's notes. I appreciate that Vlad. By the way, where is everyone else? Asked All Might gesturing to the empty desks. Most are heading out to start patrolling. Present Mick is heading for his radio show. Power Loader is dealing in his words the pink-haired menace. Eraserhead is probably sleeping somewhere before his patrol and Midnight left with Midoriya a moment ago to deal with an issue in the locker rooms. Explained Vlad, before taking a sip from the mug on his desk. Is that wise? Question All Might. Not sure if leaving Midoriya alone with Midnight is the best idea. He'll be fine. Maybe. But speaking of Midoriya, I wanted to ask why you have such a special interest in him. Asked Vlad King. All Might grew nervous and had to rapidly come up with an explanation. I just see great potential in him, he has the markings of a great hero in him. All he needs is some confidence and control over that quirk of his, replied All Might hoping that the partial lie would work. But Vlad's expression was draining that hope away. He's hiding something, he has some kind of connection with Midoriya. He's almost acting like a, thought Vlad King as he reached a ludicrous but possible explanation. So he decides to just ask. All Might tell me, is Midoriya your secret love child or something? Asked Vlad his tone serious. All Might coughed up blood at Vlad King's words. The entirety of Class 1B sat in their classroom chatting with one another as they awaited Vlad King's arrival. A classroom door opened at the exact moment the bell rang. All the students went quiet as Vlad entered the classroom with a stack of papers. Good morning everyone, spoke Vlad as he took his normal position behind the podium. Good morning Vlad Sensei, responded the students in unison. I went over the recordings from your battle trails and I must say you all did better than I expected. But some of you still made errors or took advantage of the fact that it was a training exercise, spoke Vlad as he hands out the papers he had brought with him. These are the compiled notes that All Might and I made. Go over them, understand your mistakes and what you could have done differently, continued Vlad as he returned to his podium. Yes, Sensei, responded the class as some students skimmed through the papers they were given. Others noticed that some had thicker packets than others. Now there are a few things I'd like to announce. Next Monday will be your first class for rescue training. We'll be going to one of the facilities on campus. But given the distance, we have to get there via bus. That Friday your parents will be invited on campus to tour the facilities, meet the faculty, and watch you all in a training exercise that will show off what you've learned so far. After which you'll all get a week off to prepare for the sports festival. Spoke Vlad a raised hand making him pause. Are our parents going to get tickets for the sports festival? Asked Honuki wanting to know if his parents and siblings will get to go to the festival in person. Yes, they will. At the back of those packets are forms for your parents to fill out. 
It lets us know how many are coming to Parents' Day and how many seats for the sports festival we need to reserve for them. Even if they don't come for Parents' Day, they can still go to the festival if they fill out the forms, answered Vlad. Honuki nodded in understanding. Lastly, you are going to be electing your class representative and deputy class representative. Each of you will get one vote each. The two with the most vote get the positions. Take this seriously. Remember these two will be in charge for the rest of the year, spoke Vlad as he handed out slips of paper. Vlad expected the voting to last longer than it actually did. He quickly discovered the reason as he counted the votes. A good chunk of the class had simply voted for themselves. Once finished, Vlad brought the winners up to the front of the classroom. So with six votes your class representative is Midoriya and with five votes your class's deputy representative is Kendo, announced Vlad gesturing to the two students that were now standing at the front of the class. Izuku was obviously unsure and nervous at being chosen for the position. While Kendo tried to keep a neutral face, but it was clear she was concerned about Midoriya. Who the hell voted for the rabbit? Why would anyone vote for him? Thought Kirwaro agitated that Midoriya had won the position. Yeah, he won Izuku, spoke Pony in English as she happily pumping her fist in the air. Tsuri thought Izuku his nervousness momentarily forgotten by Pony's adorable display of support. Congrats class rep, commented Kami as she plays with some of her hair. Whatever, as long as he doesn't screw up too bad. I don't care, spoke Kamakiri resting his chin on his hand. Come on he'll do fine. He clearly has skill if the battle trail is anything to go by, spoke Honuki pointing out Midoriya's achievement from the day before. Why you'll both do g-great, encouraged Kamori so quietly that the only reason Kendo and Izuku heard her is because she was seated in the front row. I agree, united they will be quite the effective team, conducting their assigned duties should prove a simple task, spoke Yanagi fully believing in the pair. Indeed Sir Midoriya and Miss Kendo will work well together, added Jirota nodding in agreement. The bell rang signaling that homeroom had ended and the next class modern hero art would begin shortly. All right, you're free to go. Izuku and Kendo you two still have to appoint a class secretary and a treasurer. Please tell me your choice before the end of class tomorrow at the latest. Spoke Vlad to the two students. The students all stood, collected their things, and headed out for the art classroom. But before Izuku could step out of the classroom, Midoriya, you're to meet me at Jim Gamma after classes are done today. And make sure to wear your gym uniform. Barked out Vlad startling Midoriya. Yes, Vlad Sensei. Respond Izuku, before he bowed and left, for the rest of the day he would worry about why Vlad wanted to see him after class. 40 UA Cafeteria 40 Izuku had been distracted most of the day. Between being voted class representative, trying to figure out one for all, and his meeting with Vlad Izuku had a lot on his mind. Izuku's absent-minded behavior did not go unnoticed by his friends. Kendo found a table for the group that coincidence let her keep an eye on Bekugo. Once the group was seated Ryaiko decided to speak to Izuku. Izuku you seem perturbed, is this due to your recent appointment as the class's representative? Questioned Ryaiko, politely from her position next to Izuku. Her face was emotionless and her tone neutral as normal. Her hands, however, revealed her concern as one of them was gently touching one Izuku's arm. Izuku did not blush or grow embarrassed at the contact instead he seemed to relax, calmed by the Yanaga's presence. Yeah, I'm worried about being the class rep. I don't think I'm qualified. It would have been better if someone else was rep, responded Midori with a sigh. You are qualified, spoke Pony admittedly denying Izuku's words. W we won the battle trail because of you, added Kinoko from her spot across from him. You'll do a hella good job, commented Kami giving him a thumbs up. You are intelligent, strong, and have a willingness to be the first into a fight. Not to mention your determination. You have a lot of traits of a good leader. Those are some of the reasons I voted for you, spoke Kendo as she placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. You were one of the six to vote for me, spoke Izuku looking at Kendo. I also vote for you, spoke Yanagi quietly. Me too, you already thinking about ways for us to improve, added Setsuna referencing his notebook. His other friends confirmed he also voted for him. We chose you to lead the class. I get that you're scared of messing up. But I know you can do this, they know you can do this. Plus you're not going to do it alone, I'll be right there to help you. So please keep the position, spoke Kendo trying to reassure and convince Izuku. Okay, I'll do it. Thank you all of you for putting your faith in me. I won't let you down, spoke Izuku a large smile spreading across his face. That smile must be protected, thought some of those who had witnessed the sheer warmth of Izuku's smile. You're welcome. By the way, why does Vlad want to see why? Started Kendo before she was cut off. Siren. Warning level 3 security breach. All students please evacuate the building in an orderly fashion. Hey, what does a level 3 security breach mean? Asked Setsuna after she grabbed one of the upperclassmen that were running by. It means that someone got past the school's barrier. This is the first time that this has happened since I've been here. Explained the third year student before he ran toward the exit. Izuku and his friends were almost immediately separated as a wave of students all tried to get to the exit. All of them pushing and shoving as they panicked. Izuku and Kanoko ended up shoved into one of the windows. Izuku braced himself against the window sill and placed himself between Kanoko and the other students. Kanoko was facing out the window. Are you oka dot dot ohf? Started Izuku but he was interrupted when another person was suddenly pressed into Izuku's back. 
Hey, guys, I didn't think this would be how we got closer, spoke Sestensa, despite her joke. She was, in fact, hiding a large blush on her face. Izuku lost focus when he felt the distinct feeling of a pair of soft masses pressing into him. Due to this Izuku stopped bracing himself, which with the crowd's continued shoving forced the three teens to press into each other. Kanoko was pressed up against the window and Izuku was sandwiched between the two girls, his crotch pressed against Kanoko's ass. Now being a healthy young man who is currently going through his hormone-filled puberty, Izuku's body decided to react accordingly. In other words, it decided to do the most awkward thing possible at that it could do at that moment, despite Izuku using every trick he could think of to prevent it from happening. It took Kanoko a few moments to process the position she was in and it took longer for her to realize exactly what was pressing into her. This situation understandable caused the two shy teens to turn bright red. In an effort to distract herself Kanoko looked outside and spotted the cause of the panic. She looked over her shoulder meeting Izuku's eyes. Hi Izuku, it's the media, they broke through the front gate. Informed Kanoko her face still flush. Her words snapped Izuku out of his embarrassment. It only took a moment for him to come up with a solution. Setsuna, detach your head, spoke Izuku. Setsuna did want was asked and floated her now detached head into Izuku's field of vision. What do you need press? Asked Setsuna as she resisted the urge to make a dirty comment about their position. I need you to find Kendo, tell her it's just the media, there's no danger. Tell her to clap using her quirk to get everyone's attention so she can calm them down. Spoke Izuku explaining his instructions. All right I'm on it. Spoke Setsuna as her head floated up above the crowd to find the Kendo. Not even two minutes after something akin to a thunderclap reverberated through the hall. Everyone went quiet and the students stopped shoving and pushing. Listen up. Everything's okay. It's just the media outside. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. Now please exit the building in an orderly fashion. Yelled Kendo. Her words calming the crowd started to carefully and calmly exit the hall. As the students filtered out Izuku was able to back away from Kanoko. Thankfully Izuku's uniform hid his erection. Kanoko was relieved that the situation was over, but a small part of herself missed the feeling of Izuku pressing against her, his big. Kanoko mentally slapped herself, preventing her mind from continuing on its train of thought. She glanced at Izuku with a massive blush on her face. Thank you for the help Setsuna, spoke Izuku with gratitude and a bow. Setsuna's head reconnected with the rest of her body. No problem. By the way, how did you like the twins? Spoke Setsuna whispering the last part into his ear. Midoriya, quickly deduced what she was talking about, reminded of the position he was in moments ago, Izuku went beat red. Setsuna cackled loudly as the three made their way out of the cafe to meet up with the rest of their class. 40 Yua Jim Gamma 40. The situation with the media lasted longer than Izuku expected it to. This was due to the teachers having to patrol the school to ensure no other unauthorized personnel were on campus, after which the day had gone by as normal. Once classes had resumed Izuku and Kendo had asked for volunteers to fill the class secretary and class treasurer positions. A vote had to be held as a result of the number of students that volunteered. Their vote went by quickly and the positions were filled. The class was all set for the first student council meeting tomorrow. After classes finished Izuku said goodbye to his friends and made his way to Jim Gamma in his gym uniform. Jim Gamma was a simply rectangular build with a concrete floor, reinforced walls, and a high ceiling with large windows that allowed natural light into the building. When Izuku entered the building he spotted Vlad Sensei over by a screen built into one of the walls. The hero turned to face him as he entered. Ah, you're here great, let's get started, spoke Vlad pulling out a remote while Izuku approached. Um, Sensei, exactly why did you want to see me? Asked Izuku, a little nervous he had done something wrong. I brought you to see this, started Vlad as he pushed a button. The screen lit up and started to play video recordings of the entrance exam, the assessment, and the battle trial, more specifically the instances that Izuku used his quirk. I reviewed the recordings from your entrance exam, your assessment, and your battle trial. I went over the footage with a fine-tooth comb and I noticed something strange, but had to talk to Recover Girl to confirm my suspicions. Spoke Vlad as he gestured to the screen, Izuku understood his teacher's unspoken request for him to try and find what he did. Izuku concentrated on the footage of himself trying to decipher what was amiss. But despite Izuku's intelligence and his ability to analyze others, when it came to himself Izuku struggled to be objective. He watched the footage on repeat but all he could focus on the negative aspects of whatever he did. His mind flashed with the words of those who had bullied him for most of his life, no voice louder than that of Bakugo, every insult like a dagger stabbing into what little confidence he had. After 15 minutes of silence, Vlad noticed his student mood dropping and decided to intervene. Izuku, All Might mentioned you were analyzing your classmates in a notebook. Did you show me? Requested Vlad snapping Izuku out of his downward spiraling thoughts. Yes sir, responded Izuku as he pulled out his notebook and handed it to his teacher. Vlad paused the footage as he opened the notebook. Where did he get that from? He doesn't have his school bag thought Vlad as he skimmed through the entries of different students and teachers. He was impressed by the detailed notes. He then found the entry on himself with a stretch and several blocks of text. This is scary accurate unsettling so. HM, what's this? Thought Vlad as something particular grabbed his interest. 
This would be depending on exactly how much control Vlad King has over his blood. But if he has control over not just his red blood cell but also his plasma, then he could potentially create monomolecular blades using his quirk, which could be useful not just in combat but also for breaching and rescue operations. Read Vlad, thoroughly flabbergasted that he had never thought of this. I'll have to try this next time I train. Thought Vlad, this is very impressive. Being able to analyze others like this shows a sharp mind. A skill like this must be properly sharpened. I'm sure Principal Nezu will be very interested in helping. Proposed Vlad not knowing the terror he would unleash later in life. Izuku broke out into such a bright joy-filled smile that Vlad was worried he'd get a tan. I didn't notice any entry on your own quirk. Have you tried to analyze your quirk after it awakened? Asked Vlad as he returned the book to Izuku. No, I haven't. Responded Izuku, lowering his head. That's fine, you can start now. I'll give you a hint. Focus on your clothes. Spoke Vlad. Izuku looks through the video straining to find what's strange. It only took a few minutes for Vlad to see realization spread over Izuku's face. In every instance, I used my quirk, my clothes were shredded. But during the entrance exam, my pant legs were fine. It also happened in the battle trail. My gloves got shredded but not my shoes, exclaims Izuku excitedly. Exactly. I found it strange when I first noticed it. So I talked to recover a girl. She mentioned that the injuries to your legs were less severe. Now why do you think that is? Spoke Vlad wanting Izuku to figure it out on his own. Izuku places a hand on his chin and descended into mutters. Is it because I spread out my power? Asked Izuku after coming to a possible explanation. That is the conclusion I came to, spoke Vlad with a nod of affirmation. But how do I spread it over my whole body without hurting myself? Spoke Izuku asking himself just as much as he was asking Vlad. Um, tell me how do you normally visualize your quirk? Asked Vlad rubbing his chin. Well I picture an egg in a microwave and I try not to let it explode. Replied Izuku embarrassed at his silly visual. Vlad resisted the urge to facepalm and instead called on his many years of experience in teaching to come up with a solution. Hmm. All right, sit down. I want you to close your eyes. Began Vlad as he and Izuku sat down. Izuku closing his eyes as instructed. When you draw on your quirk, what does it feel like? Asked Vlad. Izuku took a few moments to reply. It's a tingly feeling like a ball of lightning. But it's also warm like sunlight and it shines like a comet. Spoke Izuku trying to properly articulate how it felt to draw on his quirk. Not what I was expecting from a telekinetic quirk. But I can work with this. Thought Vlad. Okay, I want you to picture a power plant around the ball of lighting that sits in your chest. Continued Vlad. After several minutes Izuku nodded when he had done it. Now picture light bulbs that are spread throughout your body and are all connected directly to the power plant. Do you see it? Spoke Vlad. Yes, I do sensei. Responded Izuku. Great now instead of sending power to just a few bulbs causing them to blow out. I want you to distribute power to all the bulbs evenly. Take as long as you need. Spoke Vlad, finishing his instructions. Vlad watched for the next half an hour as Izuku concentrated. Eventually, Vlad started to see green lightning arcing off parts of Izuku's body. Vlad had to resist speaking as he did not want to break Izuku's concentration. For the next hour, the arcs fluctuate in intensity and location. Izuku grunted in discomfort and pain a few times, but eventually, the arcs of electricity spread covering Izuku's entire body and appeared at a consistent rate. I think I got it. But I think this is only about 5% of my quirk. Spoke Izuku frustrated and down because that was all he could handle. That's a good starting point. Now I want you to hold on to that feeling, memorize how to draw out your quirk. Once you have a firm grasp on it I want you to open your eyes and try moving. Instructed Vlad reassuring his student. After a few minutes, Izuku opened his eyes and started taking slow deliberate steps. He started going faster and faster until Izuku was sprinting. He tried leaping and easily cleared several meters in his single bound. Izuku laughed loudly in joy at his success. Vlad smiled as he watched his student revel in his achievement. Well done Izuku, but we're not done yet. We have to make sure you can fight like this, spoke Vlad as he moved to the center of the gym and shifted into a fighting stance. Izuku took a moment before he closed the distance and started throwing out a flurry of punches and kicks. Vlad easily blocked Izuku's attacks using a pair of small bucklers made of his blood. His form is sloppy, not surprising given he's never been properly trained in a fighting style. His strikes have decent power behind them, I can feel them through my blood shields. But it seems he focuses more on punches, a more kick-oriented style would work better with his physique and build. Mused Vlad as he finished observing Midoriya and threw a light punch at Izuku which connected to Izuku's gut. The unexpected blow caused Izuku to stumble and he lost his focus on maintaining his quirk. Activate your, what do you plan to call this technique? Asked Vlad. Izuku only took a moment before responding. I was thinking of calling it full cowl, spoke Izuku. Well, reactivate your full cowl and let's go again, spoke Vlad as he slipped back into his fighting stance. The two trained for hours, Izuku threw attack after attack, and he did break through Vlad's guard a few times and landed some solid blows. But most of the time he was being thrown around the gym. He was still having trouble maintaining his full cowl off and losing his hold on it when hit. But each time Izuku got back up it took more hits for him to lose full cowl. Their last exchange left Izuku on the ground flat on his back trying to catch his breath. Alright, that's enough for today Midoriya. 
We'll keep doing this training after school until I think you've got a good handle on this full cow technique of yours. We'll also see if you can control the lighting you generate, spoke Vlad as he helped Izuku stand up. Thank you very much for helping me, Sensei, spoke Izuku appreciatively. Vlad laughs heartily as he slaps Izuku's back, nearly knocking him over. It's no big deal. I wasn't going to say stop breaking your bones without putting my all into helping you. I'd be a pretty bad teacher if I did that, spoke Vlad clearly thinking that leaving a student to continue to hurt themselves and leaving them to figure out a solution on their own was negligent, irresponsible, and unprofessional. In class one a dorms erasure sneezes himself awake. Before you go, I've got two assignments for you. First from now on when you get to the dorms I want you to keep full cowl activated for as long as you can even if it's just at 1%. Be sure to record your progress. Second, I want you to look into the pro heroes in Genium and Mirko. Their fighting styles should work well with your quirk and body type. Spoke Vlad as the two left the gym and Vlad locked the door behind them. Sensei, is it alright if we keep this a secret for now? I don't want the others knowing until I can properly use full cowl. Spoke Izuku explaining his request. Sure, Midoriya, we can keep this between us for now. Remember that you still have rescue training in six days and you could properly test this technique there. Replied Vlad understanding Izuku's shy disposition. Thank you sensei and I understand. Spoke Izuku with a bow before he could leave, Vlad grabbed his shoulder. Midoriya, I just wanted to say, I'm proud of your progress today and you should be too. Keep it up and you'll have complete control over your quirk before you know it. Praised Vlad, wanting to help build his student's confidence. Thank you, responded Izuku quietly, barely able to contain his emotions. Izuku gave Vlad a deep bow and left toward the dorms. Full cow is the first step in mastering one for all, which means I'm one step closer to being a hero. I need to work even harder so I don't disappoint those who have faith in me, thought Izuku feeling this was a turning point in his journey. It was the middle of the night within the dorms of Class 1B. Izuku tossed and turned in his bed. His sleep is clearly fitful. He would occasionally mumble out a word or phrase. It was dark in his dream. Izuku stood in pitch blackness, or was he laying down? It was hard to tell. All he could see was a ball of rainbow light shining in the distance like a star. He was unable to move his body or speak no matter how much he tried. Toshi, that lucky, this one, spoke a woman's voice from outside Izuku's vision. Her words abruptly cut in and out like a video call with a bad connection. Toshi, is she talking about All Might? Thought Izuku, agreed his quirk, a great boon to one. But I wonder why dot 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 got. My quirk first, yours makes sense, spoke a male voice in a prim and proper tone. Izuku strained himself trying to hear more of the conversion. What, is he talking about one for all? Thought Izuku, who was confused at what he was hearing or if he was missing context due to only hearing fragments of the conversion. Well, you, the most excited to see him. Full cow, spoke a different male voice in a teasing tone. He spoke in what Izuku knew was fluent Italian. To be expected from. He loved seeing people grow. Commented a second female voice also in a teasing tone. She sounded slightly younger than the other women. She also had an accent that was similar to Rin's accent. So Izuku deduced that she was most likely Chinese. It, strange this isn't how, normally interacts with the users. Normally, just, quirk, spoke the man with the proper tone. True but this is not, normal quirk. First what, you think will happen, spoke a new male voice that Izuku could only describe as super funky for some reason. Hard dot 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 say, yes, gain, of, quirks, spoke another male his voice hoarse and raw. If that's, case, I'd like, get mine next, spoke the woman he had first heard. But how long till? Unlocks. Next one. Question the Chinese women. Depends. How fast he. Two. For all. Replied the Italian man. I'm curious about is, what happens? Starts affecting your quirk. First. Spoke a new male voice that didn't sound too much older than Izuku. That is something. Have to wait and see. It. Be interesting. Wake up. Spoke the hoarse voice to Izuku as a shadowed face with red eyes suddenly popped into Izuku's vision. Ugh. Yelled Izuku as he sat up panting heavily. A hand over his heart and a cold sweat visible on his face. Wake up Naya. It's a new day. We are stunningly cute and cat-like. Wild, wild pussycats are here to wish you good morning. So wake up, little kitten. Blared Izuku's alarm clock signaling the start of Izuku's day. Whipping his brow Izuku got out of bed and began preparing for his day. What was with that dream? It was a bunch of voices, right. But what were they talking about? It's all kind of fuzzy. Thought Izuku as he tried to remember the dream. But the details were slipping away. So he took a moment to write down what he could recall and planned on thinking about it after he finishes training with Vlad after school. 40 UA Main Building 40 The school day had gone by without incident. Several of the entrance exam training bots guarded UAS front gate as it was still destroyed from yesterday's incident with the media. But Izuku had a hard time believing that any of the news reporters had done it. Lunch had been eventful as Bakugo ended up swearing at some other blonde kid that had a smug expression on his face. Thankfully a girl with a frog quirk knocked out the smug blonde using her tongue before the situation escalated. Edda then admonished Bakugo for his behavior. Izuku felt a little happy at seeing Bakugo being reprimanded. After classes finished Izuku and 1B's other class officers made their way to the meeting room. 
Every first-year class was represented. Principal Nezu himself sat at the head of the long table and the hero course representatives on either side of him. Greetings and salutations, everyone. Today's meeting will be short. As you all may know, the UA Sports Festival is taking place at the end of the month. Traditionally, the business course students are allowed to run stalls and sell products during the festival. However, they must fill out forms declaring what they plan on doing. All of you are going to review these proposals and approve or deny them based on a set of criteria we will discuss later. For right now, I'd like to do introductions. Class 1, could you please begin? Spoke Nezu gesturing to the Class 1 reps. Hello, I am Momo Yeirazu and I am Class 1A's representative. Spoke Momo eloquently. Hello, I am Tenya Ida and I am Class 1A's deputy representative. Together we will maintain and elevate UAS prestige. Spoke Ida intensely, his arms moving around in strange robotic patterns. It reminded Izuku of how Yanagi moves her hands around when she talks. Hi, I'm Achako Uraka and I'm Class A's treasurer. Let's get along. Spoke Uraka in a very bubbly airheaded way. Hey, I'm Kayoka Gyro. I'm Class A's secretary. Spoke Gyro in an aloof manner as she played with one of her earlobe jacks. Izuku as normal went to pull out his notebook so he could make an entry about Kayoka's quirk. But Kendo used one of her hands to prevent him from getting his notebook out. She guessed that if he did start to analyze Gyro, he'd descend into intense muttering. H. Hello. I'm Izuku Midoriya. I'm Class B's class representative. Spoke Izuku with a slight stutter after realizing he was next. Hello, I'm Mitsuka Kendo, Class B's deputy representative. Spoke Kendo confidently. Yo, I'm Class B's treasurer, named Setsuna Takage. Nice to meet you. Spoke Setsuna with a toothy grin and a peace sign. Um, hi, I'm Pony Tsunotori. I'm secretary of 1B. Sorry if I say wrong things, still learning Japanese. Spoke Pony in a timid demeanor, nervous at having all the other class officers looking at her. Her actions reminded Izuku that he should offer her help with her Japanese when they finished the meeting. I'm Chikuchi Tojik, the class rep for the general studies course. Let's work well together. Spoke Tojik curtly her tone flat and a slight glare sent toward the hero course students. Sai, I'm Itoshi Shinso, I'm the deputy rep for the general course. Spoke Shinso his tone reinforcing his exhausted looks. The introductions continued in a similar manner. True to Nezu's word the actual topic of the meeting was completed very quickly. Only 15 minutes after the introductions the meeting was over and the class officers were released. Most of the students stood thanked the principal for his time and left. Mr. Midoriya, Vlad King has spoken to me about you wanting to train your analysis skills. I'm excited to assist you. Please I'll come to my office on Saturday afternoon around 2 o'clock. Spoke Principal Nezu in a polite cheery manner as he sipped from a teacup. Really, thank you very much. Spoke Izuku appreciatively, giving the principal a deep bow. No problem, it's been quite a long time since I directly taught a student. Now run along, your friends are waiting. Oh, and I'd like you to bring all the analysis notebooks you have. Replied Nezu shooing Izuku out the door. What was that about Izuku? Asked Pony in English. Her head tilted to one side. Vlad Sensei thought that Principal Nezu could improve my ability to analyze. Explained Izuku making sure not to speak too fast so Pony could follow. That's good. You'll be even better at strategizing than before. Once Nezu is done teaching you, you'll be scaring the piss out of even the nastiest villains. Spoke Setsuna, her head literally hovering over his shoulder. Oh, Kendo I wanted to ask you if you had some free time this weekend. Asked Izuku innocently. The girls all froze at his words. Pony looked shocked and Kendo blushed a deep crimson. Wow, I didn't think you were so bold Izuku. Commented Setsuna, however, something was off about her voice. Izuku suddenly realized what they were thinking and blushed a deep red. That's not what I meant. I just wanted to ask if you could teach me a little bit about martial arts. Explained Izuku quickly waving his hands in the negative. It's alright I understand. I'll have to ask permission from my folks. But how does set around 10am sound? I'll give you my address after I get permission. Proposed Kendo as she recovered her composure. That's fine with me. Thank you, Kendo. Spoke Izuku with a smile that made Kendo's heart skip a beat. By the way, Pony would you like me to help you with your Japanese later? Asked Izuku, wanting to assist the first friend he made at UA. I'd love that. Thank you, Izu. Yelled out Pony as she pulled Izuku into a hug. Her head fitting snugly in his chest as she nuzzled him, mindful that her horns did not hit Izuku. Izuku, although embarrassed at her action, hugged the girl back slightly confused as to why his offer made her so excited and happy, not realizing that she was happy because she wanted alone time with him. 30 later that day Pony's room. 30. Pony was feeling conflicted at the current situation. She felt happy that Yanagi, Setsuna, and Kami showed up to help her study Japanese. But she had wanted some alone time with Izuku and was understandably frustrated. She at least got to sit next to Izuku for most of the study session. Her classmates spent several hours helping her and she had to admit that it was a big help. Kami was helpful in explaining certain concepts that don't really make sense for a Westerner and Izuku proved himself to be a patient and effective teacher. Yanagi helped her on how to talk politely and respectfully, while Setsuna showed her how to understand slang, some double means, and subtle insults. She was by no means anywhere near fluent, it will take a lot more time and effort to learn but she'll likely make fewer mistakes in the future. The teens were all seated around a small table, except for Kami who was sitting at Pony's desk chair. 
All right, it's been fun, but I'm gonna head out, spoke Sitsune as she stretched her arms above her head, purposely allowing her pajama top to rise up showing off her stomach. She smirked as she saw how Izuku was looking away with a blush on his face. She stood and moved for the door. Good night and sweet dreams. Ahaha, <laughs> spoke Sitsuna as one of her disembodied hands ran along Izuku's jawline and then booped his nose. His reaction caused Sitsuna to laugh as she left. I'm a bounce too, I promised the fam I'd give him a ring today. See you tomorrow, added Kami as she slinked out of the room with a slight wave. Well, it's still a little early for bed, but maybe I can, stated Izuku as he started to stand, Yanagi mirroring him, both clearly thinking of leaving. Wait, do you two want to watch some anime with me? Asked Pony eagerly waiting for a response. Izuku paused, not sure how to answer. He glanced at Yanagi who also seemed to be waiting for his response. SS sure it sounds like fun, spoke Izuku as he sat with his back against the Pony's bed. Yanagi moved to sit on his left. Pony happily jumped to her feet and turned on a projector, connected it to her computer, and started one of her favorite anime. Once the theme song started she eagerly sat down on Izuku's right. The trio watched the pre-quirk anime about a group of pirates in search of adventure and treasure. The three heroes made comments and talked about the show. Izuku was intrigued about the crew's chief who only fought using kicks. Pony seemed to love the crew's captain, an excitable rubber man with a straw hat, and Ryako seemed to like the crew's navigator a raven-haired woman of few words that could make hands paper anywhere. Things sure have changed, thought Izuku, properly realizing his situation. He was attending UAS Hero Course, he was the rep for Class 1B, he was All Might's successor, and he had made friends that stuck by him even after Bakugo had threatened them. He was even hanging out with a pair of cute girls and was surprisingly comfortable with the situation. Even when Pony and Yanagi leaned against him as they watched, he didn't feel nervous or embarrassed. He smiled feeling something far deeper than simple joy, in this quiet moment, he felt truly content. The three teens watched for two hours before Izuku's phone went off, he pulled it out to check who it was. Pony stood and paused her computer. Sorry, it's my mom. I'll be back in a few minutes. You two can keep watching, explained Izuku as he left the room to go answer his phone. Pony decided to keep the show paused and wait for him to return. She sat in her spot again and looked over a Yanagi. Thanks for helping me with my Japanese. I really appreciate it, Yanagi-chan, spoke Pony, using some of the polite language Yanagi had taught her earlier. You are most welcome. However, please feel free to use my first name. We are friends, are we not? Spoke Yanagi in her normal tone, her face not changing from its neutral expression. Of course, we're friends, Ryaiko chan replied Pony happily, giving the quiet girl a quick hug. Pony, do you perhaps like Izuku in the romantic sense? Asked Ryaiko bluntly as she looked at Pony. Pony was so surprised at the question that her horse-like ears popped out from her hair and a blush grew on her face. Well, yeah, I do like him a lot. I know it's a bit weird since it hasn't been long since school started, but there's just something about him. I know I should probably focus more on becoming a hero. Is it wrong that I want to be close with him at the same time? Spoke Pony slowly as she didn't want to mess up. Pony was poking her fingers together nervously the whole time she spoke. Ryaiko stared at Pony for a few moments to make sure she was finished before she responded. No, it is not wrong. I am also very fond of Izuku and wish to be closer to him. Spoke Ryaiko in her normal flat tone. Despite the fact that a blush dusted her cheeks and her hands were freaking out. Pony stared slack-jawed at her gray-haired classmate. Before Pony could respond the door to her room opened. I am back. What did I miss? Asked Izuku re-entering the room. We paused it so you would not miss anything. Responded Ryaiko as she used her quirk to restart the show. Izuku sat back in between them. But he felt this weird tension in the air. The three continued to watch for another two hours, after which Izuku left with a polite good night. Once the door clicked shut and she was sure Izuku had properly left, Pony turned to Ryaiko, who hadn't moved from her spot. Ryaiko's face remained ever stoic, but she was wringing her hands nervously. Ryaiko-chan, I think we need to talk, spoke Pony doing her best to be assertive. 40 Saturated Kendo Family Dojo 40 Izuku glanced at his phone's GPS before turning left as it indicated. He was currently making his way to Kendo's house. He was walking through parts of Musutafu that he had only rarely been to before. The week had been one filled with hard work for Izuku. The UA classes themselves proved to be not as difficult as expected, for him at least. His lack of a proper social life for most of his life led to studying being his biggest time sink followed by his hero notebooks and video games. The only class that gave him trouble was art, mainly due to midnights and Setsuna's near-constant teasing. Thanks to Vlad Sensei's extra training, he could maintain full cowl even after getting hit several times. He could also push himself to 8%. But he could only hold it for so long as it strains his body to the point that he can cause hairline fractures in his bones. Speaking of his training he had discovered over the week that he could seemingly hold full cowl at 5% as long as he was conscious. He theorized this was because 5% didn't put much of a dent in the vast amounts of energy stockpiled within one for all. He wasn't sure how long he could potentially hold 100%. The longest length of time All Might had ever done hero work was after a devastating earthquake where he was active for 48 hours straight. But he could talk to All Might about that later he needed to focus on his training. 
He had training with Vlad basically all day tomorrow. He was really looking forward to working on his leg. You have reached your destination, spoke the robotic voice of his phone interrupting Izuku's thoughts. Izuku looked at the large Japanese-style building in front of him. A wall surrounded the building and an ornate gate with large wooden doors lay open before him. A sign hanging above the gate marking the building is the Kendo Family Dojo. Izuku made his way to the front door. But before he could even knock, the door slid open revealing a large man in jeans and a polo shirt. The man stood head and shoulders taller than Izuku. His hair was cut short and was a deep brown in color. The man sized up Izuku for a moment, before speaking. The dojo's not open today. If you want to sign up, come back on Monday with a parent, spoke the man in a flat but polite manner. He started to slide the door closed. W. Wait, I'm here to see Kendo-chan. She was going to help me today, explained Izuku before the door was closed all the way. The door slid back open rapidly and the man took a few steps toward Izuku and loomed over the hero in training. And what exactly do you plan on doing with my daughter? Spoke Kendo's father in an intimidating fashion. Izuku's nervousness tripled, which only made the father's eyes narrow at him. Before Izuku could respond to the question, an enlarged hand smacked the man upside the head. The man bent over and rubbed the back of his head. Quit scaring him. He's only here so Itsuka can help him with his hand to hand. Spoke a woman stepping out of the doorway. She looked like an older, more mature version of his classmate. She wasn't much taller than her daughter and wore her long orange hair in a single long braid that was laid over her shoulder. She wore a shirt and pants that revealed her athletic physique. You must be Midoriya, right? Itsuka told me you'd become over. Asked her voice and demeanor exuding a motherly feeling. Yes ma'am, thank you for allowing me over. Respond Izuku politely with a bow. No problem, it's always nice to have one of Itsuka's friends over. Are you going to be staying for lunch? Asked with a smile as she shrunk her hand back to normal. Thank you for the offer but I can't. Principal Nezu wanted to help train me later today. Explain Izuku. The woman placed a hand on his shoulder and gave him a smile. That's fine maybe another time. Itsuka's in the training room, it's the big double door down the hall and to the left, can't miss it. Spoke ushering the boy into the building. Izuku immediately followed the directions to the training room. You can't keep trying to scare off every boy that enters our home. Spoke quietly once Izuku was moving down the hall and out of earshot. I just want to test the boy that Itsuka's been talking about since school started. He looked ready to bolt before you stopped me. He honestly doesn't seem like much to me. Did Itsuka ever mention what his quirk is? Spoke in a slightly amused tone as he gestured toward Izuku, whose baggy clothing made him look scrawny. The adults were oblivious to the strong physique hidden beneath. She didn't give details, she only said it was really strong with a severe backlash. Spoke recounting what her daughter had mentioned. Honestly, he doesn't seem all that strong, the kid looks like I could snap him in half by accident. Mused with a laugh. There are different kinds of strength, you muscle head. Principal Nezu is one of the smartest people on the planet and I've never heard of him personally training anyone one-on-one. -on -one. Midoriya's quirk probably increases his intelligence or something. Besides, he came over to improve, to get stronger. That counts right. Spoke in a teasing tone as she lightly smacked her husband's chest. I guess you have a point. The kid did make it into the hero course. Spoke with a chuckle grabbing the hand and giving it an exaggerated kiss. Of course I do. Now I do believe you promised. The boys you'd take them to the park. Spoke laughing into her other hand while looking at him lovingly. You're right. I almost forgot I'll see you later. Love you. Replied rushing down a hall to bring his two sons to the park. The training room was exactly as Izuku had expected a large square room with a tatami mat floor and a high ceiling. However, one thing that looked very out of place was a set of armor and swords that sat in an alcove. Izuku wasn't sure exactly where it was from but it looked western. But Izuku's attention was pulled away from the armor by the sight of Kendo stretching in a tight workout shirt and pants. But it was the fact that her normal ponytail was traded out for a tight braid similar to her mother's. That gave him pause. She gave off a different feel than at school. Izuku couldn't quite identify what the feeling was, but he liked it. Hey, Izuku, ready to get started? Asked Kendo, bounding over to him. Hi, I just need a moment. Thanks again for helping me, Kendo. Spoke Izuku as he pulled off the Kamui Woods hoodie and his pants revealing a black workout shirt and shorts. I'm always happy to help. We'll warm up real quick then I'd like to see your form. Spoke Kendo pointing at a training dummy. Izuku mirrored Itsuka through the warm-up stretches and exercises. After they moved to the training dummy, Kendo had Izuku throw a few punches and kicks at the dummy. Your form is sloppy, but it looks like you understand some of the basics. Get into your combat stance. Spoke Kendo. Izuku spread his legs slightly and raised his fists in an unrefined boxing stance. They won't help you at all in a fight. Nothing against boxing but it's not the best for fighting villains. You need to be able to deal with kicks, tackles, throws, knives, weapons, and much more. We have to have a fighting style flexible enough to deal with a variety of situations, have it play to our quirk strengths, and be constantly improving it. So we don't become predictable and let someone take advantage of that. Spoke Kendo as she was examining Izuku's stance. Kinda like how Bakugo always starts a fight with a right hook. A smart villain could use that to their advantage. Thought Izuku before he voiced a question. I get being able to properly defend. 
But wouldn't a punch focus style benefit you more because of your quirk? Asked Izuku. True, and my fighting style does use a lot of punches and with a strong enough quirk, it may not matter, All Might uses punches almost exclusively. But for me, most villains will expect me to just throw punches because of my quirk. So when I suddenly sweep their legs, for example, they won't expect it. Replied Kendo explaining her thought process, using their expectations against them. That's really clever of you Kendo, spoke Izuku with an earnest smile. Kendo blushed blushed at his look. Thanks, my dad actually taught me that. But let's focus back on your stance. Turn your body this way so you expose as little of your body to your opponent as possible. Place your feet like this, it allows you to doge quicker and helps you prevent getting hit in the balls. Spoke Kendo, adjusting his body so he took a more effective stance. Her hands deftly moved around, clearly experienced with teaching others. Good, now follow my lead and watch how I move. Spoke Kendo as she threw some practice punches and kicks at one of the dummies. Izuku paid close attention to Kendo doing his best to mimic her movements. After about an hour of this and several instances of Kendo correcting some of his little mistakes, Mrs. Kendo entered the room with a tray that had a pitcher on it along with some sandwiches. The women paused for a moment and watched the two teens practicing. The scene reminded her of a near-identical moment of her and her husband, training in this very room when they were younger. A knowing smile broke out on her face as she recognized the look Itsuka was unknowingly giving Izuku. Hey, you two I think it's about time for a quick break. I brought you some lemonade and sandwiches, spoke as she approached, setting the tray down on a small table. Thanks, mum, spoke Itsuka as she poured some lemonade into the glasses and passed one to Izuku. Thank you very much, spoke Izuku kindly taking one of the sandwiches. You're welcome, just let me know if you two need anything, responded as she moved to leave but stopped short by the door. By the way Midoriya, I'm a little curious, what is your quirk? Itsuka never gave us much detail, fast. Izuku took a moment to swallow the food in his mouth before responding. My quirk is a mutation of my mom's it's called tactile telekinesis. It's just a strength enhancer nothing special, spoke Izuku using the cover story he and All Might had come up with as a believable explanation of his quirk. He's just being modest. He destroyed a robot that was easily taller than a 20-story building with one punch, spoke Itsuka, her praise causing Izuku to blush. Mrs. Kendo was stunned by her daughter's words and honestly had trouble believing that the shy, polite, and soft-spoken young man in front of her could be that powerful. Sounds like a strong quirk for a hero. I'll be sure to rap for you when you go pro, spoke in a you-can-do-it-like tone, after which she left the room. Izuku and Itsuka continued their break. Kendo, can I ask about your parents' quirks? You have your mom's quirk right, asked Izuku. His excitement for analyzing quirks showed itself as he pulled out a notebook from nowhere, which greatly confused Kendo as to where he was carrying it. My mom can increase the size of her hands but it's only her hands. My dad's quirk lets him increase his base strength by 10 times. My quirk is actually a fusion of their quirks. My strength scales with the size of my hands. But I do have a max size that I can't exceed and I can't really make my feet or other body parts bigger. Answered Itsuka activating her quirk to its maximum size to demonstrate. Alright, break over next I'll show you how to properly throw an opponent. Spoke Kendo shrinking her hand back down and moving to the center of the room. Okay, responded Izuku bounding over to Itsuka eager to continue the training. The two kept training until it was 1pm leaving Izuku an hour to get back to UA, take a shower get changed, and still have some time before his training with Principal Nezu. Thank you for helping me and for inviting me over Kendo and thank you for allowing me over, spoke Izuku bowing to the mother and daughter. You're welcome. Maybe next time you and your parents could come over for dinner, spoke kindly. Her true motives went unnoticed by the two teens. Thank you for the offer. I let my mom know, responded Izuku making a mental note to mention it when he calls his mother tonight. Be sure to practice what I showed you. I'll see you in class Monday, spoke Kendo with a smile and a small wave. I will. See you Monday, spoke Izuku waving goodbye as he left. The mother and daughter both re-entered their home. You were spot on, Itsuka. He seems like a very kind and polite young man. But I find it hard to believe that he's in the hero course let alone as strong as you say. Spoke setting the figurative hook. That's because you haven't seen him in action. I had a front row seat to him beating the zero pointer and on the first day of class, he threw a softball several kilometers. Plus he's not just some muscle brain he got the fastest time in our first hero course by actually predicting his opponent's moves perfectly and came up with a winning strategy. Spoke Itsuka her tone conveying the respect she had for her classmate and perhaps something more that her mother immediately picked up on. You like him don't you? Aw, oh, it's been a long time since my sweet little girl had a crush. Spoke in an overdramatic manner. Itsuka had a massive blush on her face. What no, I just respect him a lot and we've only known each other for a week. Replied Itsuka denying having such feelings. But she wasn't very convincing. So, I knew I liked your father after only two weeks of knowing him. There's no shame in having a crush. You can admit you find him cute and charming. Spoke Mrs. Kendo teasing her daughter. We're just classmates and nothing more. Spoke Itsuka ignoring how a small voice in her head added yet to the end of her statement. Okay, okay if you say so. Spoke raised her hands in mock surrender. Itsuka calmed down, her blush dying down, turned to enter the kitchen. But she stopped and tapped her chin with a finger in a pondering gesture. 
but I do find it rather odd that you invited him over instead of just training at school. I wonder why you did that, spoke a smirk on her face as she walked away. Itsuka's blush returned with a vengeance as she pondered if she did like the cinnamon roll that was Izuku. She buried her face in her hands. 30 Yua main buildings. Izuku quickly returned to the dorms, took a quick shower, and changed into fresh clothes. Then Izuku caught up on the local hero news for the next 20 minutes, after which he gathered all his hero analysis notebooks and eagerly made his way to the principal's office, pondering exactly how the principal was planning on training him. The door to the Nezu's office opened before he could even knock. Please come in, spoke Nezu. Izuku practically bounced into the room. Principal Nezu was seated behind his large wood desk a cup of tea in hand. Thank you again for agreeing to train me, spoke Izuku with a deep bow. You seem very excited and it's my pleasure to help teach you, responded Nezu with a chuckle. Yeah, I'm excited to see what kind of training you have in store for me. I've been thinking about it for the last few days, spoke Izuku honestly rubbing the back of his head. Oh well, what did you come up with? Asked Nezu putting his cup down. Well, I thought it would be logic puzzles, reading books on tactics, analyzing people, or a fake crime scene to analyze. Maybe even chess or go. Things along those lines mainly, spoke Izuku. Nezu nodded in approval. You are correct, those are some of the things I will be using to train you. But today will be something special, spoke Nezu praised Izuku as he got off his chair and moved to a bookshelf that had a chess set with pieces already on it. Nezu moved some of the pieces and after a moment a beep was heard along with the sound of something unlocking. The entire bookshelf then sunk into the wall and then moved to one side. Come along, spoke Nezu entering the secret room, Izuku quickly moved to follow the principal. Inside was a large room that had sealed glass cases with books and miniatures in them. The most prominent feature was a large high-tech looking table that had seating for multiple people. Wow, this is so cool. What is all this stuff? Asked Izuku as he looked at a beautiful model of a man named Carl wielding a warhammer atop a massive griffin. This is my brother's collection. He collects models, tabletop role-playing games, and other things from the pre-quirk era. Those models are from a Karakspro-like game, most of these models are not made anymore. Explained Nezu slipping into German for a moment. That means most of this stuff is at least a couple hundred years old. Thought Izuku before he picked up a particular part of that statement. Wait, Principal Nezu did you just say you have a brother? Spoke Izuku wondering if he had heard wrong. Yes, I did. His name is Andy, and he was one of the test subjects in the lab I was made in. I was created in part using his DNA along with several other people. He was the first person there to accept me as a sentient being. The first thing he ever said to me was well they made you using my DNA and I'm too young to be a dad so you're my brother now. Spoke Nezu with a chuckle as he recalled a memory. How old was he? Asked Izuku curious about the situation. He was around your age when I met him. They were experimenting on him and others for their quirks. Not because they were particularly strong, just to see what they could do with quirks. Spoke Nezu, his anger slipping into his tone as his grip tightens on his cup. But enough about that topic. You'll meet him sooner or later, he is the vice principal. But he is currently working to get more funding and staff so we can expand the hero course and he is laying the groundwork to get more international students into UA. Explained Nezu, Izuku's eyes widened in understanding. Wow, that sounds like he wants to make UA more on par with the other top international hero schools. Spoke Izuku recalled how most of the other top hero schools had hero courses in the triple digits, more international students, and a lot more specialized classes on offer. That is exactly what he's doing. It's been taking him longer than we anticipated. Which is why Midnight has been extra mischievous as of late. But he'll be back before midterms are here. Now let's get to training. We will be playing a little war game so while I read through those notebooks of yours, I want you to read through the rules. Spoke Nezu as he pulled a tablet off a table brought up something and then handed it to Izuku. Izuku gave Nezu his hero notebooks. The two sat down on opposite sides of the high-tech table. Izuku started to mutter as he read and Nezu calmly sipped his tea as he read through the notebooks. Hours ticked by and Nezu was on notebook number 7 which was written when Izuku was about 8 years old. He found an entry mentioning how All Might was appearing less in public and had several theories on why. The younger Izuku had guessed that was All Might was injured, but disregarded it since All Might was never reported to have had an injury. As he continued to read, Nezu grew more and more impressed with Izuzu. Nezu's face grew a look of such sadistic glee that it could send a shiver up the spines of the most veteran hero and the most hardened villains. Principal Nezu I'm finished, spoke Izuku. Nezu turned his attention to Izuku and put a bookmark in the notebook he was reading. Wonderful, then that means we can get started, spoke Nezu pushing a button on the table. The table lit up revealing itself to be a screen of some kind. A holographic landscape rose from the table. It depicted a forest split in two by a valley with a river. Wow, so cool, whispered Izuku in awe at what he was seeing. Thank you, Power Loader gave it as a gift for my brother and me. Now select your units using the tablet. I have limited us both to the more basic units to start with, requested Nezu as he started taping his tablet. 
Izuku looked through the units available and carefully selected units that fit with the strategy he came up with while he was reading the rules. Are you ready? Then let's begin, spoke Nezu as both armies appeared in front of their respective players hidden from their opponent by a fog of war. Izuku gained a determined look and the two would only stop their games due to the dorm's curfew. 40 Sunday Jim Gamma 40 Vlad stood to one side of Jim Gamma with a stopwatch in his tablet. He paid close attention to Izuku, who was bounding through an obstacle course made of concrete that Cementos had made upon his request. In addition, several targets, villain drones, and traps were also sprinkled throughout the course. Vlad watched with no small amount of pride. Izuku had been improving rapidly so far, absorbing his lessons like a sponge and applying that knowledge during the training. I should take power loader and cementos out drinking as a thank you for helping me set this up, thought Vlad. Izuku was tearing through the course, navigating the obstacles by bouncing off some of the concrete walls, clearly imitating Mirko's movements. But the movements were sloppy nowhere near Mirko and he could only string about three wall jumps in a row. But he was improving and the numerous broken and charred villain bots were a testament to that. Izuku felt his heart beat in his chest and the power of one for all course through his body as he dove past a concrete fist that smashed into the ground. He rolled when he hit the ground and used the momentum to kick a villain bot into scrap. He continued to run dodging some fake blades that popped out of one of the walls. He was in the final stretch, he punched a villain bot, threw a second bot into two more and axe kicked the last one so hard it resembled a crushed soda can. Izuku broke out into a full sprint, built up some speed, and jumped through a ring suspended from the ceiling. As he cleared the ring he grabbed a rope and used it to swing himself. During the swing, Izuku rescued a civilian that was about to fall into lava. Izuku let go of the rope and landed past the finish line and immediately looked at Vlad for the results. You improved your time by about 25%, and you didn't damage the dummy, well done. Spoke Vlad showing Izuku his time. Izuku elated with his improvement jumped in joy only he still had full cow going and he easily almost hit the ceiling. Vlad chuckled, good-naturedly, as Izuku came back down, but then had to rub his eyes to make sure if he was just seeing things. Weird could have sworn he stopped falling for a moment. Maybe a break is in order. We have been at this since 5 a.m., though Vlad as Izuku landed. Izuku, how about we take a break and go get something to eat? Proposed Vlad. Izuku's stomach answered for him by growling loudly. Yeah, that sounds good, spoke Izuku in agreement embarrassed by his stomach. Lunch rush doesn't work on Sundays, so we will have to get our own food. Come on I know this place that makes great takeout. My treat, spoke Vlad with a smile and smacked Izuku's back. Yes sensei, but sensei shouldn't I switch out of my costume if we're going outside? Asked Izuku, gesturing to his uniform. Vlad thought for a moment. No it's alright for you to keep it on, you just have to change back into it when we get back anyway. Besides, I can teach you a bit about patrolling and civilian interaction on the way, spoke Vlad. He left Jim Gamma. Izuku excitedly fell and stepped beside Vlad. The teacher and student left school grounds, making their way through the city streets. Vlad taught the basics of the different kinds of patrols, how they are set up, where to go, and what suspicious behavior to look out for. The duo had stopped twice on their way to launch, once by a pair of women who wanted Vlad's autograph and some pictures. The two women even gushed over Vlad's cute sidekick, which predictably flustered the teenager and amused the pro hero. The second time they paused because Vlad noticed an elderly couple that turned out to be lost. So Vlad gave them the proper directions to their destination. It wasn't long after this encounter that they made it to a small roadside restaurant named Rama Nikaraku that had a bar open to the outside. Izuku noticed that things seemed to be pretty busy as most of the seats were filled. A blonde-haired man in an orange and black jumpsuit that had fox ears, whiskers, and nine foxtails. Next to him was a beautiful woman in a purple and white hoodie with dark hair and featureless white eyes. There was an orange-haired man in a black shiakusho with a giant sword on his back, along with a whole bunch of other people dressed in similar attire. Finally, there was a small group consisting of a bald man with arrow tattoos on his head, a blind woman who was in a contest of some sort with a dark-skinned man in blue, there also a girl in similar blue attire siblings most likely. There was also a couple in red with the man having a burn scar over part of his face and the women looked kinda depressed. Midorira, come on, grab a seat, called out Vlad who was already seated. Yes sensei, responded Izuku putting away his notebook and took the open bar stool between Vlad and the fox man. Izuku pulled off his hood and removed his respirator mask. The delicious smell coming from the kitchen in front of him made it difficult to keep his mouth from watering. A girl in a uniform approaches them, she seems only a few years older than him. Hey Kansama, who's the fresh face? Seems a bit young to be a sidekick. Spoke the girl clearly familiar with Vlad. Hey I am, this is Izuku Midoriya. He is one of my students. Responded Vlad politely. Really well I look forward to seeing you at the sports festival in a few weeks, I'll be sure to cheer you on. So what can I get you to? Asked I am sweetly as she pulled out a notepad and a pen. I'd like two bowels of my usual, one for me and one for the boy. We have more training after lunch. Spoke Vlad. I am quickly wrote down the order and then ripped the page out of the notepad. All right, though should be rig. Started I am but she was cut off by a yell from the end of the bar. Hey, can I get more of this stuff? Oh and more meat. Yelled a heavily scarred man with bells in his hair formed the group of black clad swordsmen. 
Kenny, that's rude. Spoke what appeared to be a younger girl with pink hair. Your food should be out shortly. Spoke I am clearly a little irritated at the group as she placed some iced water in front of them and then moved over to the boisterous group. Do you come here a lot, Vlad Sensei? Questioned Izuku, taking a drink from his glass. Yep. During my very first patrol as a pro hero, I stopped a villain who was trying to rob the place. Tuchai over there gave me a meal on the house and I've been a regular here ever since. Answered Vlad with a nostalgic tone in his voice as he gestured to the chief in the kitchen. Now Midoriya, what do you think about your progress with your quirk? Asked Vlad, glancing at his student. I honestly thought I'd take much longer to gain any sort of control. So I'm happy to have full cowl. But I still have a long way before I get full control of my quirk, let alone become a pro hero or live up to the belief people have put in me. So I'd still like to keep training with you Vlad Sensei if that's okay. Spoke Izuku avoiding his normal self-deprecation. Personally I think you're ready to properly stand on par with the rest of your class. However if you want more after school training I don't mind, but I think it would be good to train with some of your classmates or some of the other teachers. It's good to face a variety of quirks, the varied techniques and perspectives could inspire you to use your quirk in creative ways. Spoke Vlad wisely as the chief Tuchai placed two hot bowls of ramen in front of them. Thank you sensei, training with others sounds like a good idea. Spoke Izuku as he pulled the bowl closer to him. The piping hot ramen smelt amazing. You're welcome. But I can't train you the week before the sports festival. I and the other teachers have last-minute arrangements and meetings to do. Now eat up Midoriya. We still have plenty of training left for today and I'll see if Snipe or Midnight want to help out. Spoke Vlad as he dug into his food. Izuku, despite being slightly worried about possibly training with Midnight, happily dug into his bowl. Vlad made small talk with the chief as he ate. Izuku meanwhile was going through some of the lessons Nezu taught him in order to come up with countermeasures against his teachers and classmates. When Izuku was about halfway finished with his bowl Vlad spoke. By the way Midoriya how did your training with news go yesterday? Do anything interesting? Asked Vlad curious. Oh, it went well I think, we mainly just played various games the whole time. Replied Izuku. Uh, must have been frustrating, to lose the whole time. Nezu doesn't really hold back. When he plays. Commented Vlad understanding and sympathy in his voice as he grabbed his glass to finish his drink. Actually most of the time we ended in a draw and I only lost in two of the games. Spoke Izuku, his words caused Vlad to spit, taken for everyone there to stare at him in disbelief. The restaurant was deadly silent and several patrons were frozen in the middle of eating. Izuku grew self-conscious and nervous at becoming the center of attention. WW what? Questioned, Izuku looking around the room utterly confused at the reaction. 30 Class 1B Monday morning 30. The entirety of Class 1B eagerly waited for the Hero 101 class to begin. The class was abuzz with conversion talking about their weekends and exactly what the rescue training would consist of. So Izuku, how was your date with Kendo on Seri? Teased Satsuna, her words making Izuku nervous and Kendo irritated. But embarrassed as she may have a little crush on Izuku. The date, squeaked out Kanoko in shock. Don't listen to her. She's just trying to mess with Izuku. He just came to my family's dojo for some hand-to-hand -hand combat training. Explained Kendo throwing Satsuna a light glare. You're no fun. Replied Satsuna cheekily, sticking her tongue out at Kendo. Kinoko was internally relieved that Izuku didn't go on a date with Kendo. Before the conversion could continue Vlad entered the room. Good afternoon, as I mentioned last week you have rescue training today. All Might, 13, and I will be your three instructors for this training. What you wear in this exercise is up to you. But I recommend you wear your costumes because if you find that they hinder your abilities, best find out now so you can have them altered. Now everyone gets changed. I'll meet you on the bus. Spoke Vlad. Yes, Vlad Sensei. Spoke the class as one. Most moved to grab their costumes. 30 outside in front of the bus 30. Izuku quickly changed into his hero costume and met up with Kendo beside the bus. Hey, Izuku looks like we're the first to be ready. I already checked the bus, it's one of those open layout ones so we don't need to organize the class. Spoke Kendo diligently. Oh, thanks Kendo. Are you excited about the training? Asked Izuku. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how well my quirk works in rescue scenarios. I don't just want to be a hero that punches villains. Spoke Kendo a little self-conscious. I think you'll do great. You have an attitude that is commanding yet kind. That will make calming down panicking civilians easier for you. Commented Izuku. His compliment caused Kendo to look away trying to hide the light blush on her cheeks. Hey the rest of the class seems to be here, we should get them on the bus. Spoke Kendo hastily as she moved toward their classmates, a slightly confused Izuku following her. Class 1B all filed into the bus and took seats. Izuku sat in one of the eight seats near the front of the bus that faced one another. Pony, Yanagi, and Tetsutetsu all sat on his side and across from them were Kendo, Yui, Tagaru, and Jurota. The rest of the class was seated in the back of the bus and Vlad himself was driving the bus. The bus had been moving for a few minutes, when he felt something touch his arm glancing down, all he saw was the sleeve of Yanagi's costume. But he could feel her hand on his arm. He looked towards the girl. Yes, Yanagi-chan, asked Izuku in a kind tone. There is something I wish to inquire about you, spoke Yanagi in her normal eloquent manner, her visible blue eyes meeting Izuku's green ones. Um, sure what did you want to ask? 
replied Izuku, not even a little nervous despite Yanagi still resting her hand on his arm. The students nearby all seemed interested. Exactly how does your quirk function? For it bears a resemblance to All Might's own, in my opinion. Asked Yanagi. Izuku kept his best poker face but internally he was freaking out trying to remember the details of the cover story. Wait, hold on Yanagi, you're forgetting that Izuku hasn't had his quirk for very long, he's probably still getting a feel for it. Besides All Might doesn't hurt himself with his quirk, that makes a huge difference. Spoke Tetsu Tetsu interrupting Yanagi. Your statement does ring true, replied Yanagi, her tone still monotone. But still I bet it's cool to have a simple augmenting type quirk, you can do a lot of flashy stuff with it. My steel is pretty strong and can destroy bad guys in a fight. But it doesn't look all that impressive, spoke Tetsu Tetsu as he activated his quirk causing his skin to turn to steel. Ah, no way I think it's really awesome looking. You're definitely pro martial with a quirk like that, spoke Izuku earnestly. You really think so? Seems like it'd be easier to be a popular hero if I had something flashy. My quirk can only go so far since it has a set hardness. Plus I can suffer from iron fatigue if I hold it for too long. So improving myself is going to be difficult, replied Tetsu Tetsu resolve in his words. Izuku pulled out his notebook. HM, well if your body absorbs iron faster than a normal human, you could potentially carry custom high concentrated iron supplements in case you need them in the field. Also if you learn the right combination of martial arts you could improve your effectiveness in close combat. Also, you could potentially thicken the steel on certain areas of your body thus making you more durable. But that could limit mobility from the added weight dot 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 but what about? Spoke Izuku as he descended into full-blown muttering. Those are nice ideas. But should we stop him? Spoke Tagaru as everyone looked at their class rep muttering away. Do you have something to help me Izuku? Asked Pony. There was a slight delay before Izuku addressed the question. Pony looked at his notebook as he shifted to an entry on her. There was a sketch of her in her hero costume along with notes and annotations. A possible improvement to Pony's costume that will let her fly much easier would be to add loops to her costume so she can put a pair of horns through them, allowing for more stable flight, spoke Izuku as he made alterations to the sketch. Oni was excited wishing she could have altered her costume before this class. Cool, do Inagi next, spoke Juzo. Yanni should carry some small objects to use her quirk, such as ball bearings to use as weapons. Depending on the maximum range of her quirk, she could carry some micro cameras for reconnaissance and surveillance, explained Izuku as he was still not really paying attention and muttering away. All right, that's enough, spoke Kendo stopping anyone else from asking another question. Yanagi gently squeezed Izuku's arm, breaking him out of his muttering. Izuku grew very embarrassed after he realized his actions, but the look she gave him and another reassuring squeeze calmed him down. We're here, called out Vlad drawing the class's attention as the bus slowed to a stop. The class all shuffled out of the bus. Waiting for them in front of the massive dome was the pro-heroine 13. Hello everyone, I've been waiting for you, greeted 13 as she stood before the class in her white space suit-like costume. Despite having already met the space-themed heroine during orientation, the students were still excited by her presence. Come on, I can't wait to show you what's inside, spoke 13, gesturing to the front door. She led them inside and the whole class looked out in awe of the facility before them. Holy crap, it looks like an amusement park, spoke Tetsu Tetsu. Vlad was amused by seeing his students' reactions to the USJ. A shipwreck, a landslide, a fire, a hurricane, act. I created this training facility to prepare you for different types of disasters. I call it the Unexpected Simulation Joint. But you can call it USJ. Explained 13 striking a dramatic pose at the end. Fucking adorable. Thought Vlad at 13's antics as he noted that they were missing someone. Hey, 13 shouldn't all might be here already. Asked Vlad as he approached 13. He did too much hero work on the way to school this morning and used up all his power. He's resting in the teacher's lounge, answered 13 quietly so the students while holding up three fingers. Well, it can't be helped. We can handle the class with just the two of us. Let's get started, spoke Vlad getting the students' attention. Excellent. Before we begin let me just say one thing. Maybe two things. Possibly three, four, or five, spoke 13 beginning to ramble and second guesses her statements. 13 I think they get it, spoke Vlad. Listen carefully, I'm sure you're aware that I have a powerful quirk, it's called Black Hole. I can use it to suck up anything and turn it into dust, spoke 13 in a very serious manner. Yeah you've used your black hole to save a lot of people from disasters, added Izuku unable to help himself from nerding out a little. That's true but my quirk could also very easily be used to kill. Some of you also have powers that could be dangerous. Please don't forget that if you lose focus or make the wrong move your powers can be deadly. Even if you're trying to do something virtuous like rescue to Vlad's assessment you all have a solid idea of your quirk's potential, and All Might's combat training you experience how dangerous your quirks can be when used against other people. Carry those lessons over to this class. Today you're going to learn how to use your quirks to save people's lives. You won't be using your quirks to attack enemies or each other, only to help. After all, that's what being a hero is all about, ensuring the safety of others. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for listening, spoke 13 ending her speech with a bow. The students all applied 13's speech. All right everyone now that's done, we can. 
started Vlad before the lights all around the facility went out. The hairs on the back of Vlad's neck stood on end and his instincts were ringing like alarm bells. Vlad's head snapped toward the central plaza of the USJ, where he saw a dark purple mass with eyes grow and a man with disembodied hands step out of the swirling mass followed by more and more villains and a giant bird man with an exposed brain. Everyone stay together and don't move, yelled Vlad as his body tensed. As the training started, questioned a waste taking a step forward to get a better look. Stay back. This is real. Those are villains, spoke Vlad as blood flowed out of his gauntlets. It floated through the air ready to harden at a moment's notice. The only heroes I see are Vlad King and Thirteen. Perplexing according to the schedule I retrieved All Might should be here, spoke the missed villain. Bastards used the media last week as a distraction. Growled out Vlad as the mass of villains marched closer. Where is he? I went to all the trouble of setting up this raid party to deal with All Might the symbol of peace. I can't believe he's not here. Maybe if we kill a few brats, that will trigger the boss spoke the hand villain glaring hatefully at the heroes. Sent by the alarms aren't going off, spoke Thirteen clearly a little distraught. One of them must be jamming our sensors and they're most likely blocking our regular communications. They chose this isolated location, they are organized and prepared Thirteen get the students out of here and alert the main campus. I'll cover your escape, spoke Vlad with authority. But Vlad sensei there are so many of them. I know you specialize in group fights like this, but can you really handle this many villains alone? Asked Izuku worried about his teacher. Don't worry I'll just have to push past my limits and go plus ultra. Thirteen I'll leave it to you, spoke Vlad as the blood around his gauntlets hardened into a pair of warhammers. Vlad leaped off the top of the stairs and hit the ground running, closing the distance between him and the villains. Shooting squad forward, yelled a villain as he and four more villains moved closer to Vlad and unleashed a swarm of projectiles at the pro hero. Vlad created a blood shield that hit his whole body. The shield easily weathered the storm of bullets, knives, and other such missiles intended to murder him. The villains panicking at the ineffectiveness of their attacks doubled their efforts in the desperate hope of overwhelming Vlad's defenses. Vlad surprised the villains when he suddenly leapt forward, closing the distance between them and shield bashed one of the villains while simultaneously sweeping the feet out under a second. Vlad brought a hammer down on the prone villain's gut knocking her out. He grabbed the villain stunned by his shield bash and threw him into two of the other villains before elbowing another villain that was sneaking up behind him in the face. Shifting his shield to another hammer he brought both down each hitting a villain's face in the heap. The third villain in the heap getting a swift kick to the face knocking them out and losing a few teeth. Vlad turned to the rest of the villains, his face one of cold fury and grim resolve, the villains all hesitated for a moment. I ain't afraid of you, that blood of yours can't hurt my rock body, he yelled a masked four-armed rock like villain charging him. The villain got in close and started throwing sloppy punches, which Vlad dodged weaving through the punches with ease. Are you sure about that? Spoke Vlad as the blood weapons melted and reformed around his fist making blood brass knuckles, which he used for a devastating punch to the villain's face, which sent the villain flying back and left him unmoving in the dirt. Vlad moved his head to dodge a punch form an ogre-like villain that was easily twice his size. Vlad grabbed the limb and uppercutting the arm at the elbow with his blood knuckles. The villain howled in pain as he lashed out with another punch. Vlad dodged the blow, ducking under it and ending up on the villain's left where he sent a low kick to the back of the villain's knee, causing him to partly collapse to his knees. With the villain's head now closer Vlad lashed out with a blood warhammer again that rose up and hit the villain in the chin causing him to tumble over defeated. Vlad immediately rolled to the side dodging a villain with multiple arms wielding swords. His blood shifted into an English longsword. Vlad swung the sword the villain went to block with her own not noticing the smirk on Vlad's face. The blood sword cut right through the metal blades like a hot knife through butter. How? Questioned the female villain looking at the now useless blades in shock. Instead of answering her Vlad took advantage of her dropped guard and struck her with the pommel eliminating her from the fight. I won't let you hurt my students. You scum. Roared Vlad. His blood weapon ready to strike out at any moment. I need to buy time for the class to escape, I can't hesitate, I can't hold back, even if I have to cut some of them down even if I have to die, I will not let them get to the kids. Thought Vlad fully resolved to give his life in defense of his students. There he goes trying to intimidate us. He's not hesitating to be brutal. And since we only have melee characters left, we're forced to get in close. Even when they work together and we rely on each other's powers he has the advantage. Spoke the villain Shigaraki, watching as Vlad sent a villain flying with a hammer blow and then blowing out another villain's knee with a kick. How annoying, the worst thing about dealings with pros is when they live up to all their hype, spoke Shigaraki scratching his neck, as he watched Vlad become a virtual whirlwind sweeping through the cannon fodder villains. Wow, he's holding them off. I should have had more faith in him, spoke Izuku as he looked back at his teacher for a moment as the rest of Class 1B was running for the exit. Kendo noticed that Izuku had stopped running. Izuku this is not the time. 
You can analyze later we have to go, yelled Kendo, not noticing the use of his first name. Izuku didn't notice as he started to run, falling in step with her. Before the class made it halfway to the door the purple mist villain appeared in front of them, thirteen and the class stopped in their tracks. There is no escape from here, spoke the villain Kirajiri. Damn it, thought Vlad noticing that the work villain had gotten to the class. Vlad had butted the villain he was grappling with in the nose before punching them away. He tried to make a run for the stairs but was blocked by more villains. It is a pleasure to meet you. We are the League of Villains. I know it's impolite, but we decided to invite ourselves into this haven of justice to say besides isn't this a fitting place for All Might the symbol of peace to take his last breath. I believe he was supposed to be here today, yet I see no sign of him. There must have been some sort of change in plans that we could not have foreseen. Ah well, in the end, I suppose it doesn't matter. I still have a role to play, spoke Kirajiri eloquently as he spread out growing in size. Thirteen who had subtly opened one of the caps at the end of her costume's fingers in order to use her quirk. But before she could attack Tetsu Tetsu, Rin and Togaru all leapt at the Miss Villain lashing out at him. Ha, huh, did you really think we'd just stand around and not fight back? Yelled Tetsu Tetsu. You live up to your school's reputation, but you should be more careful children otherwise someone might get hurt. Spoke Kirajiri eyes narrowing dangerously. You three get out of the way right now. Ordered Thirteen, not able to use her quirk with the student in the firing line. I'll scatter you across this facility to meet my comrades and your deaths, yelled Kurajiri, enveloping the heroes in his mist-like body. Everything went black for the heroes. Forty ruins zone forty. A student dropped out of a portal in the ruins zone landing right where they agreed upon. As they got their barrings they noticed that they were surrounded by villains. But instead of attacking him the student pulled out a flash drive and passed it to one of the villains. Hey, why didn't you tell us that All Might was a no-show? Isn't that why you're even in this dump? Questioned a villain. Cut me some slack, even Vlad King was surprised that All Might wasn't here. Besides, I was the one to swipe the lesson plan from the teacher's office and give you the information on my class's quirks in the first place. Spoke the traitor with slight anger. Good enough for me. So boss what do we need to help you with? Spoke another villain sarcastically. I am supposed to be the miraculous survivor of this little party. So I can keep an eye on the school for the league. In case they want to attack the school again after you all kill All Might and the students. It is a shame though some of those hero wannabes would look nice naked at my feet. Explained the traitor flatly a demented smile as they imagined themselves on a throne, some of their classmates, collared, naked, submissive, and of course, serving them sexually. Hurry it up, kid. I still want to play with some of those little heroes. Maybe even keep a cute one for myself. Spoke a female villain with spider-like features as she licked her lips with an unnaturally long tongue. Here's a tip then check the downpour zone. You should find a green-haired kid, pretty meek, and his quirk breaks him. Personally, he's the kind that annoys me the most, so be sure to have fun, spoke the traitor with an evil chuckle as they pull out their phone to show a picture of Izuku in his hero costume. Oh, this little rabbit looks delectable. I can't wait to taste him, spoke the spider villainous, hungrily and sadistically. All right now I just need you all to rough me up, enough to convince the heroes. Then I'll find a decent hiding place till the heroes show up. Got it, explained the traitor a smirk on their lips. Got it, responded the villains. 